everyone. I'm Lily. And I'm Britt. And we're the co-hosts of Lady Shit with Lily and Britt. We talk about anything and everything related to being women today. Like how much it sucks when people ask when you're going to have a baby. Or how much we love Michelle Obama. And is there a right way to do self-care? As doctoral students, we're occasionally smart, putting in a little bit of research into every topic we cover. But mostly, we're just ridiculous. As the guy who sold us our podcast equipment said, you're the kind of smart where you really have to dig. If we sound like you're a cup of tea or a glass of wine, new episodes of Lady Shit come out every second Tuesday. You can check us out on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, and Podbean. Oh, and when you're searching, make sure Lady Shit is one word. Yeah, and you have to substitute the I for an exclamation point. Why did we make this so hard to find? I guess the guy at the store was right. Atherton? Yes, Dr. Atherton? I'm Ross Jennings. I'm a, I'm a general practitioner, and I, <clears throat> I have got a problem that... Uh, it may be spider-related, and you seem to be the foremost authority on the West Coast, or, well, <laughs> any coast, for that matter. Dr. Jennings, let me tell you that every so often in a little town somewhere, there is a health scare, some unexplained outbreak, and spiders make convenient culprits. Did you know, Doctor, that on every suburban acre, there are at least 50 to 60,000 spiders, and that each spider eats about 100 insects per year? And that means at least 5 million insects are consumed per acre annually. Well, think about it, Doctor. Perhaps man might find the planet uninhabitable without spiders. Dr. Atherton, I have nothing against spiders. It's just, we have had three deaths in my town, and I'm just, I'm afraid there's going to be some more. Now, if you could just, if you could lend me your expertise for just an afternoon, we're really not all that far from it. It's a town called Kanaima. Kanaima? Yeah, you, you know it? It's familiar. Let me see what I can do. Where are you exactly? This is the emergency podcast system. This is not a test. Movies are bombing all over the country. They are posing as movies you already know. They may already be in your theaters, your neighbor's home, or even your own. Do not panic. Specialists have been dispatched. They will help you identify these pretenders and defend you against this invasion of the remake. Please stand by for further instructions. Welcome to the Invasion of the Remake podcast. I'm your host, Jason Bishop, and welcome to Face Your Fears Week. And we're going to do it in the most benign way possible <laughs> <laughs> by watching it on our televisions. Um, no real life experiences here. Yeah, I don't think no. this is going to cure any traumatic ills that we may have, but we're going to be discussing all month long, actually. We're going to be discussing phobias, and that'll be our theme around all the episodes that we do and this mm-hmm. week is so on the nose the movie is actually called arachnophobia <laughs> and if you don't know what arachnophobia means it is a fear of arachnids aka hey, spiders arachnids actually covers spiders scorpions ticks and a few other things but mm-hmm. we're going to concentrate on the spider part considering mm-hmm. that's what the movie does yeah sam stepanenko hello 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 and how you doing over there trish <laughs> i'm doing i'm doing okay this is a hard this is a hard one. This watch is for Trisha's me. fear. This is my giant, yeah. giant fear. I love snakes, hate spiders. What? <laughs> I all I had to do was look at the roof. <laughs> and I followed your leads and that was perfect. We're both, we're both looking up. And it worked. It worked so oh. good. It worked so good. You're so mean. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what you were I'm doing. I'm bringing rubber snakes. <laughs> well, yeah. Don't bug Jay in there. I remember when Sam and I were roommates, and uh, yeah, you, back then you were a little more squeamish about snakes, and I had a couple of rubber snakes that I threw on your bed, and you were not happy with me. <laughs> no, I remember not. Yeah, I don't know when it changed, but I still don't like them. Things without legs are what get to me. I don't mm. know why. Worms, snakes, they just make my skin crawl. They don't scare me. They just make my skin crawl. Oh. Yeah. I uh, used to have, I guess, I wanted to say it was a fear of heights, but I think it was more of a fear of the 
falling, falling part yeah. from the heights. Is that I the never, falling? It's the it, it, really, sudden it, impact it, at the end that I'm afraid of. Yeah, I've never <laughs> you're, really you're had that stopping. big of a problem. But I, I had a traumatic experience as a child where I almost fell off a side of a cliff into Whitewater Rapids, and uh, oh. all I could see underneath me was was a long way down, and my dad holding me from my hand, um, <sighs> pulling me back up. So. Dad caught me. Wow. <laughs> I probably wouldn't be here today. And I, I managed to, like, I had falling dreams f- until I was about 16. And then somewhere along the way, it just went away. Yeah. Well, most fears are associated with some sort of experience, right? Yeah. Like my former fear of snakes comes from somebody throwing a dead snake at me. Right? I mean, I know, I can pinpoint exactly where that fear of snakes comes from. Mm-hmm. Right? So for a lot of people, that's where, where it, what it is, is there's something that sits in your lizard brain saying this is not a pleasant experience for me and i don't like it and it scares me and this might make trish feel a little bit better women are four times more likely to be scared of spiders than men about 12 percent of men are scared of spiders about 48 percent of women yeah. are scared of spiders i don't know the truth of those numbers but those are the numbers i read and i'm just going to regurgitate them Okay. Because yeah, everything on the internet is true. Yeah, right? true. Right. My God. Although, I don't know. I well, then that know, means it's I, a perfectly reasonable fucking fear. <laughs> then I must know a lot of braver women because uh, I know more men scared of spiders than yeah. women. Including one of our best friends. Yes. Well, and, <laughs> Who but, has been a guest on this show yeah. and I won't tell you which one. I want to know where these numbers come from because here's here's the thing. When I was living in Australia, the number of deadly freaking spiders is huge. I would be a lot more you afraid of spiders. Afraid. That is a rational caution. Yes. yes. That is a rational when caution. When you That's live in a region where you have mm-hmm. lethal spiders, uh, lethal everything. All over the place. Like just lethal spiders and like tiny, teeny ones that have like venom that is flesh eating. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, here in Alberta, at least in in Calgary, central Alberta, we don't have much and that can and really hurt you spider-wise. I, you said the recluse. Yeah, the recluse, mm-hmm. I believe. I'm not even 100% certain that the recluse yeah. is the president. Black in Alberta. widows are fairly rare here, but when you mm-hmm. start getting closer to BC, the Okanagan, yep. there's a lot of black widows out there. But we do have rattlesnakes, so you know. Yeah. Though they don't get into the city, but no, <laughs> at least rarely, very, very rarely. Yes, they're more South Medicine Hat, yeah, um, Lethbridge, Lethbridge, Drumheller. So yeah, you know, when you're in the big city, there's not a lot that can hurt you other than other people. But mm-hmm. you get into the smaller towns, you might there might be snake issues, and S- certainly, yeah, I, I, there might be more dangerous spiders in this very far, far south part near the border yeah but. as you get further south and i think that's just it uh, our climate's just a little too cool or we're dry as well and yeah. spiders like a more human climate so we tend to have the smaller little more well, harmless spiders here well also i think it's not so much like they, they, they do like the humid climate but a humid climate is also more that's conducive like to having basements. lots of bugs mm-hmm. yes so if there's lots of bugs there's lots of spiders yeah now and unlike this movie most spiders are reclusive like they will attack other spiders they're solitary creatures for the most part there are some Mm -hmm. that will will live in colonies but for the majority of them they they live solitary existences and will attack other spiders and this movie they run in a eusocial type uh, hive type hive, hive, hive type uh, yeah so you have your your queen and your king and and your drones that can't reproduce that doesn't actually exist in currently in what we know of spiders and we certainly haven't discovered a species and I would know because I've never gone out to discover a species of spiders. So uh, that that fact is true. Yeah. <laughs> I do not know, <laughs> but ac- according to uh, the wikis, uh, uh, there are no spiders that exhibit that kind of social behavior where the, the division of mm-hmm. labor and sexual labor and everything else um, that doesn't exist in the arachnid species no it's it's more the bees the ants the yeah. that kind i can of see why they did it in this movie mm-hmm. it keeps them you you know your boss spiders isolated now you have something you need to go for because the other ones will die off oh eventually. it's a great device it is yeah. a great film device yeah. absolutely and when you're talking about discovering a spider in uh, a, a reclusive region that has never been explored Explored before and could be have species completely unchanged for millions of years. Yeah. Hey, 
you know that it, it's there's nothing implausible about it. We are discovering new species of insects and literally every day arachnids yeah. in on our planet every day, all the time. You know, even oh, here's tiny a, rodents. Yeah, here's a cave on this island that we've never been to before, and oh wow, there's stuff in here we've never seen before. Yeah. So you know, it happens all the time. Yeah, and I, I mean, how, how many of these species that we already know have evolved into something different mm-hmm. um, over the past? Several hundred years, yeah. in the last hundred years, absolutely. Right. I mean, I mean there's over a hundred thousand species of arachnid alone that are known. That are known, yeah. And yeah, we can't possibly know all of them. There's no. got to be tons that we just haven't seen because there's a lot of a lot of the world that we haven't been to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, as you said, spiders tend to be reclusive. So, how many do you just never see? Yeah, right. Or how many are so good at hiding that you never see them? Yeah, mm-hmm. especially in like these in like these South American rainforests where you can't even see a freaking panther when it's on top of you, <laughs> yes. let alone a, a bug. Yeah, well, I mean, in, and in this movie, you've got a giant ass spider with eight inch leg span yeah. running into coffins and backpacks, yeah. and nobody seems to fucking notice. I I get a little glint of movement out of the corner of my eye, and it could be like just this tiny, tiny little thing. But it, I like just that sense of motion. Outside of uh-huh. my in my peripheral vision sets me off. So I know uh, uh, that really bugged me in this movie. Bug, get it? Yeah. Bug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not bugs. They're yeah. And it's funny. I, I know how distracting it is to you because there was an episode. I was. I think it was even last, last I, episode. No, it was a few episodes but, ago, and it actually happened two weeks in a row. Yeah. And it was these tiny little spiders on my window so uh. that were crawling on my window because I think they like the warmth <laughs> that yeah. was coming through the yeah. window. Yeah. yeah, and I, I faced Jay, and I, I can see as I'm looking at. The window it's driving me it was nuts. making him absolutely crazy. Uh. <laughs> yeah, there was one. The one episode we stopped so I could go get him, and yeah. then there was another one. I just waited till you guys left, and then I got him. But yeah. they were both the tiny little species, of, you know, house spider. I didn't want to say anything because I knew about Trish. Yeah. Which yeah. Was her freaked out. I remember there was a, like a cobweb uh, on my roof, and she's like staring at it, and I'm like, "There's it's." It's just a web. There's nothing actually on it. But a web is a house for spiders. It was a a strand. And I just like got my Swiffer and got rid of it. Better? (laughs) That just tells me there's a spider here somewhere I don't know about yet. (laughs) So when I watched this movie, I realized why I haven't watched it since the first time I saw it. I felt the same way. It's not a bad movie. It's not a good movie. It's just there I, I you know it, i thought i remember this being a huge hit it was. Um, it was although it did open at number three in its opening week but i mean it was the same week as ghost and die hard 2 yeah so, so it, it did all right then fucking competitive oh it did it did really well <laughs> i remember this movie doing really well in the theater it did in well, the movie had a budget of $22 million, and it grossed a little over $53 million in the U.S., and another $30 million in home video. Yeah, and that's not yeah. a bad return on, on, yeah. on, on a little movie like this. Yeah, for, you know, 1990. Yeah, no, it's not Absolutely. a bad return at all. Yeah, and most of your actors were TV actors, with the exception of, I think, uh, Jeff Daniels, Jeff Daniels yeah. at the time. Pretty much, yeah. It's, it's, it's a, it has a recognizable cast, but it's not a super famous cast. No, I mean, John Goodman was actually just making the leap to film. I think this might have been one this of his, might have been his yeah. first after, you know, he might have still been working on Roseanne at the I think time. he still was. I think he was. And I'm guessing he's looking for jobs again. Yeah, probably. <laughs> no, he might. I don't know. I, I'm looking, looking at... Not that he, he... Out of everybody in that cast, he was probably the least hurting for work. Actually, most of them well, were doing pretty good yeah. outside of Roseanne yeah. before he, she opened her stupid mouth. Yes. I mean, yeah, like Lady Bird. I mean, yeah. you and Laurie Metcalf's doing yeah, good. Yeah, Metcalf like, and Sarah Gilbert's doing fantastic exactly. as well. Well, so I think there's just going to be like a hurting. Hogan family esque thing where they'll just do a spin. Up. Apparently, that's, they're that's talking about spin off somebody yeah. else. That's yeah. what, what they're proposing anyhow. And I'd watch those external. I'd watch those other characters. I really would. If the writing was as solid as it is on Roseanne, then I don't fucking need Roseanne. She was always the most annoying part of that show to me. Yeah. <laughs> I watched it for John Goodman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I <laughs> love Dan. Dan and, was such and a good Matt character Caff for the most yeah. part. Dan and Metcalf. Yeah, she was so. That's why when it was uh, watching her in Lady Bird, I'm like, oh, I forgot she's really good. Because mm-hmm. Roseanne, she's she was good, but it was seemed 
very like there's a bit of a parody of herself but then when it comes to, like good roles i'm like oh no she is a really good actress she's mm-hmm. a really good actress and you she's done so many great performances and i'm glad she finally got recognized for it with ladybird yeah exactly mm-hmm. yeah, yeah john goodman <laughs> i think the doctor is probably the most recognizable character as well like the old doctor he's i've seen him a, in a ton of stuff yeah that was henry jones and uh, he's been around a long time we actually talked about him before do you remember what episode? Oh, my God. Good Lord, no. <laughs> I can't remember yesterday, I, let alone an episode that we did 50 years ago. I thought I was ago. leaving all this connective tissue stuff to Trish, but she doesn't... I've seen him in so many movies, it's all blending together. Uh, well, it's he's hard. probably most famous for being in Vertigo, you know, working with Hitchcock. And this movie certainly has uh, a Hitchcock nod. kind of nod, if mm-hmm. you're thinking of that fun thriller you think of birds right yeah but we talked about him in episode 116 310 to yuma he was in 310 to yuma oh yes he wasn't a featured player in yeah. three he rarely is yeah he rarely is he's, he's, he's no. one of those actors i i know that actor but you don't know mm. his name kind of actor he's a hard-working and, actor and, and when you recognize it when you're seeing him as an old man in this movie it's going to be tough to recognize the younger version and make that connected it's very very i think different. he was the bartender maybe i gotta rewatch that because yeah totally I, I didn't get a me. chance to look at my cast list but i think he was the bartender he's, he's one of those actors i've seen a lot but i don't i think i only think of him as an old man <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's what because that's what he was when we were growing up. Because he was in a lot yeah. of stuff that we watched growing up, and in one of these supporting roles where he plays the doctor or the yeah. pharmacist mm-hmm. or the grocery store run- owner or a grandfather. I can say that right? about a lot of the the cast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This movie starred well, Arachnophobia in nineteen ninety, directed by Frank Marshall, who was mainly known as a producer. He was actually one of Steven Spielberg's producers, who is the producer of Arachnophobia. And this movie certainly takes a lot of nods from Kingdom of the Spiders. Uh, so much so, it's amazing he didn't get sued. But you don't sue Steven Spielberg. No. no unless you, you have a huge don't. war chest. But Yeah, because we talked about, for, for the Arachnophobia episode, doing Kingdom of the Spiders instead. But this one just... Because it was starting to come up in the news, they, uh, James Wan is currently attached to a possible mm-hmm. remake. And it's a long way off, so I figured we'll, we'll take a crack at it now and uh, revisit this down the road. If it does get remade and it's going to be tough it is uh-huh. because this movie stars jeff daniels uh julian sands if you don't know who he is uh, he's been off the radar for a little mm-hmm. bit but he's most famous for the warlock franchise and was also in naked lunch oh yes uh, of course starred john goodman and if you weren't watching roseanne then you probably saw him in argo and 10 cloverfield lane Harley Jane Kozak played Molly, which was Jeff Daniels' wife in the movie, Mm -hmm. and she was in When Harry Met Sally. Stuart Pankin... (laughs) <laughs> probably i always had a problem with Stuart pankin I just I, there's something about him like ah oh, not this guy <laughs> he's, so, he's I just your never, newman yeah, yeah i feel that's he it is. Newman. he is i just pankin. always had a tough time with him but you know he was in things like congo and striptease so huge been in things. a lot of movies yes. bombs famous bombs at least yeah. <laughs> he was the sheriff of this small little town and he always plays a gomer Yes, uh, Kanaima yeah. is the name of the town in this movie. Yeah, he's always a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Brian McNamara was also in this. He was in Short Circuit. Mark L. Taylor. You might remember him from Inner Space. Of course, we talked about Henry Jones. No, not Dr. Mm-hmm. Jones. Not, <laughs> Indy. not Dr. Jones. Not that one, but the one from 310 to Yuma. And you can check that out in episode 116. Peter Jason. Also, we talked about briefly, he plays Henry Beachwood in this movie. He's another one of those guys you've seen in a million mm-hmm. things. He's been in 48 hours. And we probably mentioned him in episode 27 Whoa. sam's first episode they live they live he was in they live oh yes he was <laughs> i knew that i, I, I was making connections I, I know him as soon as every time i see him i know yeah. I've, I've seen him you're right? like yeah. that guy yeah. yeah roy brocksmith who plays uh irv and he was in another episode that we covered episode oh, wow. 84 he was in the original total recall nice and then there was uh, Mary Carver as well. This is a huge cast of uh, folks, um, and I could go on forever. But uh, they cast a town. 
They, yeah. they did literally cast the town. I didn't cast oh, yeah. the whole town. No, I didn't, oh, I didn't either. either. I didn't either. It's a, it's a lot of people, but the, the, the big scene principles, I didn't even cast their children because they don't really come into play that Not much. Really in that's it. something no. that they could certainly focus a little bit more on in a remake, I think. And we're also bad with casting children. Well, yeah, when I, when I have an so. excuse not to cast children, I will do so. Yeah, and if they're, if they're not like the central figure, I'm yeah. not going to cast them mm. because – by the time it goes into production, you're going to have to cast somebody else. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. when we get into these kind of episodes and we talk about possibly how to change it and stuff, sometimes things coalesce. We're like, oh, shit, we didn't cast any children. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we're casting based on what the original film looks like. And oftentimes what we think a re- remake's going to look like won't coalesce until we start talking about <laughs> it. And this is going to be one of those movies. I think so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Trish and I were talking before Sam got it's here. Hard. and. You're not we're, supposed to. A little, just a little bit. Okay. We're just a about little, how, a bit. Because this movie's really entertaining for me. Oh, I, be, I, I have other feelings. Uh, <laughs> see, yeah, I mean... I think I'm, it holds up extraordinarily well. You know, it's it, it does, but I couldn't... It had an identity crisis for me. It wasn't funny, it wasn't scary... And it wasn't really action packed either. Like it didn't, I didn't get, I didn't get the tension from it that I was wanting. Hmm. Right? And that's the way I felt the first time I watched it as well. Is I never got the tension, and I went to it with my sister who's yeah, petrified never, of spiders. You know, I've never See, viewed that, it as a as a horror movie, and I think it's I view it as a, a family thrill comedy. They actually say that in the trailer, yeah. which I will mm. run here shortly. Yeah. Don't worry. And mm-hmm. uh, it, it's a thriller slash comedy. I mean, if you have an arachnophobia, if, you, if you're prone to that, yeah. I can see this movie being a lot scarier for you. For me, it was just like, yay, this was fun. Yeah. And yeah. It, it, it owes a lot to like those 50s creature features. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. I just found that it didn't hit either mark very well for me. See, I, I didn't hate it. Don't get me wrong. I didn't mm-hmm. hate it. It yeah. just didn't quite gel and give me the experience I was wanting from but it. But I think you've hit on the head what it is. Like, if you have an arachnophobia, you are feeling the tension and you are feeling the fear. And so you, and you kind of, when a comedic beats happen, you do laugh because you need to, yeah. because it is terrifying. Yeah. And I mean, Delbert was great for the, for that comedic relief. There's one scene that still bugs me and, it's, and it's, it bugged me the first time I saw it and it bugged me again, is this, the turn and cough scene. Way too long. Didn't it's work. Not, yeah, it's, it's not funny. Yeah, the timing that on that bit, doesn't work. Yeah. yeah, It seems weird to me. Well, I mean, I get it. Yeah, you know, Jeff Daniels' character, uh, Ross Jennings, he's a doctor who's moved to this small town under the understanding he's going to take over local practice. Mm-hmm. But the local doctors decided he doesn't want to retire. So, because he's a dick. Because he's a dick. So now he's moved yeah. there and he's got no clients. He's got no patients. He's got um, the one lady. He's got one lady who just thinks like the old Who's man's disappointingly a- healthy. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Exactly. You know, you can survive if she's like her her body's ravaged with disease. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but then he's like, nope, everything's right with you. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why you're on this prescription. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah the the other doctor gave her prescription for high blood pressure and it's a little high but nothing that no. is requiring medical treatment and it's the, the type of blood pressure the part of it that's high he's like that doesn't require medication especially not this medication mm-hmm. yeah yes the town doctor is a bad doctor he's yeah. a fucking terrible doctor oh well he's yeah. doing he's doing he's practicing medicine from 20 years ago he's probably never updated probably anything 40 years ago 40 years yeah he's he's not learned anything mm. new like mm-hmm. i mean if they let him have leeches he probably would use them yeah yes, well recently kind of doctor yet. recently i went and got myself a new regular physician and they they had a few openings at this place and they're like well we got an older gentleman who's got a gentle disposition and we've got a younger guy i'm like i'll take the younger guy yeah because yeah. he's going to be more up on modern current medicine. medical practices and, and and testing and and stuff yeah absolutely and uh, i even asked about the you know finger and cough thing and he's like yeah we don't do that anymore (laughs) nope they spent decades trying to figure out how not to do that (laughs) and we still get doctors like doing it either no of course and we still get a nice scrape and a whole big thing that they stick in and like just vice it open yeah i I think that that, they haven't found a better way to do that yet i'm sure they're looking i'm hoping they are but i don't know (laughs) sorry that's my little looking Sorry, that was that was my bitchy bit. I've been through a lot of doctor stuff lately. <laughs> I get a little irritated. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like he's just not up on anything, and it's no. not. Yeah, no, and he turns this town against Doctor Jennings really quickly. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we got a nice little primer for the trailer. Enjoy that, and we will talk.
all sorts of arachnophobia right after. <laughs> Jennings family has just moved to the small town of Canaima. Oh, Ross, smell that air. Oh, God. In search of a simpler life. Want to blow up a bullfrog? Okay. It's the perfect place. Goodbye crime, goodbye grime. Except for one pesty little problem. Come with me and look at the web. The web? I have a terrible fear of spiders. Come on, we live in the country now. It's time to work through this irrational, paralyzing it's not a rational. Hollywood Pictures and Amblin Entertainment present Jeff Daniels. Honey, we're in the living room. We need you to kill a spider. And John Goodman. Go over Clintock infestation management. Oh, my guy's just a spy. Would anybody object if I tore this floor out? I would. False alarm, then we on. There's no spider here. Every so often, in a little town somewhere, there is a health scan. There's a rumor going around that some kind of spider might have killed Sam Metcalf. Down from Spiders make convenient culprits. There's no spider here. I think one of your Venezuelan spiders hitched a ride here. There may be some spiders around here that are very dangerous. Dad, chill out. Just run. They spread out from a central nest in a web-like pattern and dominate the entire area. So when that happens... This town is dead. Better in court by private stock. Ah! Hollywood Pictures and Amblin Entertainment present Arachnophobia, eight legs, two fangs, and an attitude. Perk off, Lloyd. If we find the spider that did this, you can arrest him. Arachnophobia, a thrill comedy. Yep, a thrill comedy. <laughs> Neither for me, I'm sorry. It was still a good movie, I, but I, I just didn't... I, thir- I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. Oh, I don't I, find I it, like it scary, but, you know, there there were a couple little... little it, it, was, it was fun for me, but it wasn't funny. I, well, I mean, I've seen this movie several times, so whatever humor bits I've laughed at, I've long yeah. since it's now it's just this... Uh, fun thing i like to revisit from time to time yeah and there are like there's lots to love about this movie and like i said i am not hacking on this movie right? mm-hmm. like not by any means like, because it is fun and the performances are phenomenal they are yeah mm-hmm. i mean i think it holds up so well because it doesn't need a remake really. i know i don't think no. so i mean 28 years later that movie still looks good the script's fairly decent fashion wise yeah okay there's a little bit there but not it's not horribly so because nope. it's very urban mm-hmm. everything's practical like they had one mechanical spider for the boss guy the yeah. the general yeah. uh they actually had a real spider as well <laughs> yeah but uh you know for a lot of the more up close stuff a lot of the things were cuz the the actual tarantula it was like a bird eating tarantula that they used it's a tough one to wrangle mm-hmm. so they had to have a mechanical one which was built by somebody who's now famous for special effects. Does anybody know who that was? No. Oh, my God. I'm probably going to kick myself when you probably. tell me. Jamie Heineman from Mythbusters. It was oh, one of his that. First, one of his first things. Okay, kicking uh, myself now. I'm not because I didn't, re- didn't do my research. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I'll keep myself from not doing my research, but I, I would have never made that connection otherwise. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was a big uh, bird spider that they used. And the little ones that they used, uh, the, the house spider that initially bred with, mm-hmm. is actually a harmless spider out of New Zealand. The name escapes me at the moment. But yeah, and what I, that's also kind of what I like, what stands out about this movie is just the concept. Like, it is one spider, but then crossbreeding it with a domestic version yeah, it was, is what causes a lot of problems. And, the, and like it was an, uh, a, a uh, Avondale spider. Okay, I've actually heard okay. of those. Yeah, um, they're out of New Zealand and uh, they're fairly harmless, but they look nasty. There's... I I didn't even think they looked that nasty, to be honest. Um, I, that's one of the things I would I would change. Um, I would make better use of CGI. I mean, use, use a real spider, but do some make them look really. I want them to look like absolutely stunning. Well, I think like, if I, you've I want got them to have, like really cool patterns and stuff on them. Yeah, if you've mm-hmm. got uh, and they did wind up bulking up that bird spider yeah. too uh, with the yeah. fake abdomen just yeah. to make him look bigger. Yeah, right. But yeah, I like to have them. I want them to look like really appealing, right? So that's that, that, so that, like you could have a scene where somebody actually picks one up because it's so pretty. Mm-hmm. Right, like that. Yeah. I, right, I think that would make a really great device, but it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, if you're picking like a tropical spider, maybe that would make sense that it have uh, interesting coloring to it. Yeah, like almost it's something mm-hmm. that would like allow them to camouflage in 
the their natural environment mm-hmm. even right so it, it's pretty but it's also deadly uh, deadly and effective too right because it because it hides them from birds and stuff like that when they're underneath the branches and the, and the leaves and stuff yeah. i think that would look mm-hmm. really cool really give the spiders more character because to be honest to me with to me with me with you with you um <laughs> I found With you this, at home. Yeah. yeah. He lies to everybody else. I do, yeah. yes. <laughs> Especially myself. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> Good point. Uh, but yeah, I didn't find the, the spider all that scary because it did look like a spider that you, you could... Well, I th- uh, and I think we're so used to seeing tarantulas in movies yeah. since the 50s as the yeah. be-all yeah. and end-all yeah. of creepy-ass spiders. Well, James probably, Bond. Yeah. There's a whole thing with yeah. the tarantula in there yeah and and, and it's Indiana Jones it's, they and, don't yeah. they're they're not really much worse than a bee sting no tarantulas they just Jeez. look scary and 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 yeah I'd like to see something different mm-hmm. I, and I get what you're getting at and but it's when you have arachnophobia it doesn't matter the color they're still fucking terrifying but I get what you mean like I think the originals probably yes should be brightly colored but what we want is at the end of it they're, they have to be hybridized to like the dank brown that most spiders here have because they need the brown to like. I mean, if it's in. crossbreeding, like I think they should have, they should be a little darker with whatever the offspring are, and maybe just some markings. Yeah, and have a little yeah. more. Tra- and that's what I liked about the New Zealand ones. They were a little, they were more gray, but they yeah. were spindly and still looked exotic. They did, yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. And that's probably why they used them. Yeah, no, I, I mean that's the thing is, is I want them to look unique. Because it, I recognize that spider. I've seen that spider before in other movies, yeah. in documentaries, wherever I've seen it. But I've seen that spider before. See, like, oh, yeah. And like um, they have the whole kind of little subplot where Molly takes pictures of something and she could be like, that's the most. I've never seen a spider like this before. Yeah, like, right. mm-hmm. yeah exactly. That's exactly the point I'm trying to make. Is and if it's if it is re- like a really attractive, beautiful spider, you you set up a really great opportunity to have a ch- one of those children picking it up, right? Or or mm-hmm. or like getting really close to it to look mm-hmm. at it because it's so pretty. I like, used to that have one some great tension. Uh, I used to live in a different area. Sam remembers where he's up in that area now. Yeah. But when I first moved in there, there was. Pretty much, it was the apex predator in my yard. Uh, wow. This green spider with yellow markings on the back. Yeah. It kind of looked like a smiley face on his back. Yeah. <laughs> and it had a big web. It took up residence right next to my door. And we left it there for a while. And then I think my brother wound up evicting him. I was a little upset with him because I really liked the spider. But yeah. it was very unusual because it was, it was fairly large. You know, not like in this movie, but it probably... For Calgary? He was about the size of a quarter almost. Uh, no, I'd, no, I'd say he was um, like loony? a loony yeah. size or probably bigger than that. A little bit Toonie. bigger than that. Yeah. <laughs> for our, We're for doing our Canadian money. Canadian size about the dollars. size of a silver dollar, yeah. Yeah, yeah. about a silver dollar yeah. size. It was probably a little bit slightly bigger. You may have even seen it a couple yeah, I, of I times. Saw him, I, that's why I was saying... I, they, 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 yeah, they, it was really quite big. exotic for Calgary, so yeah. I'm guessing it was probably somebody's pet that escaped mm. or whatever. And I remember like the spite the webs that it had put up everywhere, like wow. it would go ker snap. Yeah. <laughs> <We> should, <laughs> they we were should, so solid. <laughs> we should ask the guy who met at the horror con about which spider it could be. Yeah, I always meant to capture it and then take it to some guy and or at least get a good picture of it right yeah Yeah. Uh, this is before like decent cell phones and stuff like that so i I still kind of regret what (laughs) what happened what my brother did to it i'm like no that thing was Uh, awesome and it was harmless it wasn't hurting anybody no i'm like i i have a rule i mean it's a death sentence if you're in my house but if Mm -hmm. you're outside my house i'm in your territory you're have a have a good old whatever catch catch a bird or (laughs) <laughs> kill the other insects in my yard. I'm fine with it. <laughs> and if it's right by your door but doesn't do anything, like if it's not overtly aggressive. No, it was not aggressive at all. But it's still... Eh. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Yeah. You can actually see Trisha's skin crawling. Uh, yeah. I know. <laughs> She's going to have to have a really hot shower uh, when she gets home. Ah, skeevy. But I can... <laughs> well, I remember being in Australia and like, that's not the... I, I wanted to go to Australia, but I forgot there's all the spiders there. And <laughs> they had... We were having a Christmas dinner one time in like the hostel I was staying at. And then a huntsman was on the wall. And... I don't know if you're familiar with Huntsman. They're large. They are large. They are hairy. Everybody's like, well, that's like the least deadly spider in Australia. I'm like, I don't care. It's looking at me. (laughs) It is fucking huge. Uh, Bigger than my hand. Yeah. In size. But yeah, at that point, Christmas dinner is over for me. (laughs) 
<laughs> I went outside. <laughs> With the other spiders. That's yeah. flawed logic, but it I is, understand I it. can't see the other ones. Yeah. That's fine. It's the one I can see yeah. that's it's bothering the one me. It's, it's the one that's... We're having eye contact. That's not natural to have with a spider. It's not good. It's Don't do that. Funny, I, and that's the thing. I've never understood being afraid of things that you can see because you can see it. You know what it's doing. You know where it is. Mm-hmm. It's the stuff you can't see you should be afraid of. Yeah. I, I do... I, I get that. The bigger the spider, the easier they are. They're kind of wrangled, to be honest. Yeah. Because they're, they're slower. slower. Yeah. And they're bigger, right? And they're big. Yeah. yeah. So you just, I don't know, get yourself a Tupperware container. How come well, in there? They're, they're harder to squish, so they're, but they're easier yeah. to capture humanely. Yes. <laughs> there, there was another one I did see that I also ran from. There was one that I think it had like a blue stripe on the back, and I think that was the flesh-eating venom spider. Yeah. So that was in the showers. Didn't have a shower that day. Not even, there's tons of stalls. Still not going to be in that building. <laughs> <laughs> real close to peeing outside guys real close <laughs> when nature calls but that's right yeah i knew it was in there that's all i knew okay let's talk about the movie <laughs> yes sorry i was like going you have to know the level of the arachnophobia and why you should there's some spiders you just should be afraid yeah. of i'm sorry i i I swear to God, these were the most oblivious scientists and, and, and people looking for spiders because they were yeah. just, <laughs> they could not, like, no peripheral vision at all on no. these people. Yeah. Like, how do you miss that? <laughs> well, I, maybe they're just so used to things creeping and crawling around them, they just don't notice anymore. It is a small yeah. town, so and as you mentioned. These, oh, you, but no, I'm like, I'm talking Venezuela. Venezuela, yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, that thing crawls into the guy's backpack and... <laughs> Most of everything around them is alive. So if yeah. they reacted any time something moved, they I wouldn't suppose. get anything done. I suppose. I thought it was really neat when they did that kind of poison smoke in the tree to catch their to get their specimens, and they just had yeah. these big containers and everything kind of cool. rained down. That was really neat. Yeah. No, and I didn't understand it was. Poison. I don't know if that was a real thing. Well, I thought initially they were smoking it, but then they said they're dead. So I'm like, oh, it's got to be a poison. Then. But they were sort of surprised yeah. that they were dead. No. They were surprised that they were alive when the spiders yeah. k- kicked back up again. Oh, okay. that's right, too, yes. They were surprised that they, they survived. Like, the initial come down and they're like, nah, it's harmless, it's dead. I'm like, mm-hmm. and then it unfurls and it's not dead. And the funny yeah. thing is, is, Julian Sands' character actually says, I'd like to find one alive. Yeah. Right? So that's why I was confused. Yeah, that's because they, they, be they caught some dead specimens yeah. Um, yeah. out of the tree when it rained down. They that was they were getting some dead specimens, yeah. but fresh dead specimens, so at least yeah. they can work on them, right? Yeah. Once they're desiccated, they're just useless. And I don't know if it was completely all spiders. I thought there was other no, no, there were butterflies and all sorts yeah. of insects, and, and yeah, because they had to sort through the buckets. Yeah, yeah so they, I mean, you, you saw beetles and all sorts of things, but then they, the big clunk happens, and uh, that's when the spiders start falling. Start falling. Now, that was one something. That if, if it was a poison gas. That's something that bothers me because a good mm. scientist isn't going to go out to harm the environment that they're studying. Yeah. yeah, that bothered me too. And then there was no protective measures on their part for breathing no. the gas in. That's right. So I'm like, what is happening? See, and that's why I thought it, I, I didn't even catch that. That's why I thought it was a smoker. Just like I, no, I thought it like. was too. Like, and smokers don't kill the bees, they make them run because yeah. they think the trees are Or on they fire. put them to sleep. It puts they them just, to sleep, yes. Yeah. And that was what I was assuming was happening until they said, "No, it can't be. It can't be alive. It's, it's, yeah. it's dead." And then the thing pops up and it's alive, and they're surprised, like, "Oh, so it's yeah. a poison gas." S- yeah, yeah, I know. See, that's dumb. Like, I think they, at the out, the the most they'd probably do was like a level of sedation. Yeah, that's what they do now because yeah. you're right. They'd want a live specimen, yeah. so it's yeah. dumb so to we'll, do it we'll that way. That. Yes, that's the first thing we're going to change, I guess, yeah. Uh, because yeah, it's it was bad science. It was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the method work made sense, but yeah, the, the, the science itself doesn't. At least if they were intending to kill these specimens, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, and I'm surprised yeah. not one of them had an umbrella. Yes. <laughs> right? See, that would have been a good sight, sight gag for right? a comedy, right? Yeah, because he's yeah. like, get ready. And as he puts his hat on, I would have been like, just unfurled umbrella. the umbrella. It would have been great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would like to see somebody with those umbrella hats. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I, there's nothing wrong with the odd sight gag that makes sense in yeah. context, right? Yeah, and that one would have been a good one. Yeah, yeah, especially with the photographer not knowing what's going on, be like, "What are you guys doing?" <laughs> yeah, but the photographer's also the catalyst. It's his bag. First victim. He's the first yeah. victim of uh, of the general. 
Yeah. I'm gonna. I, I took when I took my notes. I kept. I, I kept calling him the the boss because he's the boss fight, right? Yeah. yeah. So I kept thinking of it like a video game. But yeah, they call him the general in the in the movie. So yeah, he he's a victim of the general, and uh, the general smuggles in with the body. And when they get the body back to yeah. Kanaima. Yeah, Kanaima, Kanaima, yeah. It, the body is completely desiccated. Which I yeah. liked. The, the spider See, fed on the, one of the few bits that was kind of funny for me was that scene where the Undertaker calls the, calls the family and says, uh, "You might want to reconsider the open casket." Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the fact, what's weird though, is at some point though, I would want, have him say that you might want to reconsider that, but I want him to be a little bit, have a bit more reaction to be like, they've just brought this in from South America. It, this shouldn't be the way the body is. Yeah. Yeah. Even with and that their... spider makes a good little journey even then because it escapes the coroner's basement, uh-huh. makes it outside, it's caught by a bird, kills the bird, and then that bird falls into the Jennings yard just as on moving day yep. as they're moving into this new farmhouse. That was a happy coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the coincidences are awesome in this movie. It's yeah. like, oh, look at all of this. I, but I like but the way that you, you have follow have the that. spider until you get to the first appearance of the Jennings. Yes. It, yeah. it worked really well. Yeah. They, they said there's, I, there's lots of great stuff in this movie. Mm-hmm. I can see where like Steven Spielberg's influence is in here. He mm-hmm. produced it. He didn't direct it. But his influence is all over this movie. Yeah. yeah, it almost feels like to me that they made that. I think this had a PG thirteen rating. It, yeah, it was. I think it was. So, yeah. a, it was actually a Disney release through one of their labels, so they could do more adult orientated content. But you know, I I watch this and I'm like this is a family friendly scary movie, and in my mind, I want to keep it that way. But yeah. I can tell Sam probably doesn't. No, I'm okay with a family. I don't friendly. think this would have made uh, near as well, much money if it had R, been yeah. just an R-rated. No, I have to movie. agree. No, I I, w- yeah. I would keep it PG. There's uh, there's just some things that I would do to amp up that tension to make the adult yeah. audience and even the younger audience more anxious about what's going on because well, that's they don't, never they, they don't rely too heavily on jump scares. They do have no. them, but they're really they're really clever about when they use them the cricket oh. was a jump scare mm-hmm. when the spider in the cereal even though you're half expecting it yeah, yeah. It, the, the the going spider. up the ladder in the the barn yeah, yeah. no and I, don't, I mean there are moments you expect it and then they happen and you jump anyway yeah mm-hmm. yeah i didn't i um, remember the first time seeing this in the theater tr- you know trying really hard but there mm-hmm. was that was one of those jump moments like ah damn it you got me you pissed <laughs> off with yourself because yeah. you you got yeah. got did we go see this together with Melanie? i think maybe we did you just i because I, I remember I, being in that theater and i remember i had bruises on my arm because my sister was just absolutely terrified of spiders and every time a spider came on screen she'd grab onto my forearm and squeeze and i, I actually had a bruise after this movie i'm like oh my for fuck's sakes it's not they're fake they're on a screen but I don't have a record for me, so I don't get it. Matter. <laughs> but I tried. Part of me watching this movie was I'm like, I have to face my fears. This is that was why. That was what. Yeah, exactly. That's the reason I went to see this movie. Is mm-hmm. I'm like, this is it's too much all the time. I have to do something. Even about when this. I was pitching like a spider movie, she was like, "We can do arachnophobia. I've seen that one. I can get through it." Yep, <laughs> I can do it this was one. The unknown. I mean. Kingdom uh-huh. of the Spiders is essentially the same movie. It's an earlier version uh, starring William Shatner. <laughs> yeah. Look, at these and we may spiders. still do it down the road, but we'll give it a big breadth of distance because their the movies are very similar. But I think that one ends with the whole town covered in spider webs. And that I, would have been a satisfying ending. That, that I really would have cool. liked that ending. Yeah, because that's yeah that's the whole point. This is part of they were migrating tarantulas. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I like the part of. The movie where this particular species of spider, because of where it came from, it was limited to how far it could spread out. And the fact that it came here and it like bred with a domestic spider, it could be limitless. Yeah, and I think that's why it took the the kind of bee colony ant thing um, Mm -hmm. is so they can centralize and have like the boss characters uh, of of the spiders as well. So that initial breeding, he bred mm-hmm. with a, a common house spider. It was still a fairly large spider, yes. but yeah. the big spider bred with, spider, yeah. in a, mm-hmm. the most romantic spider love scene. <laughs> I had to say it was quite touching. It was like, oh, they love each other. I wonder if he ate her. <laughs> I guess not. No, it would be more likely she would eat him. Yeah, uh, not likely. She would have been really full. Oh, she would have been really <laughs> it was full. Like, 
five times her but size. But I mean, from like a, a spider's perspective or a bug perspective or a what other yes. species do perspective, the females most likely do. They do tend to be the dominant gender. In, yeah. In, in uh, but, Which I wouldn't mind one, keeping that, the that, female here as a queen. And yeah. something that bugged me, and I never picked up when I was, uh, when I was younger, it was like, why was the queen different at the end? It's because the first breeding, she wasn't the queen. She just... She was, was the first. Si- she was the first cycle yeah. of of the spiders, which produced a queen. Yes, and that's why we had like the two boss spiders at the end because it mm. produces a queen of similar species to to the a more compatible species in this in this particular yeah. case. Yeah. yeah, and I suspect that the they don't really explain it, but I suspect that the original ho- the original mating resulted in the demise of the. Original poor uh, probably. Yeah, yeah, she was probably just a vessel for. Yeah, once it yeah. once it created the egg sac. Yeah, yeah, egg sac. Yeah. Yeah, poor thing died. I would suspect that's the case. But you know, did you get the feeling that the general killed the photographer out of revenge? It felt like a revenge killing. Like, it really oh, did. It felt very deliberate because like, when, when the, the, they were all coming out of the trees, and this the general was out wasn't in the tree it was off to the side you could see him watching what was going yeah. on and then one one comes alive and and the photographer freaks out drops it and then just squishes it steps yeah. on it i got the feeling you they killed were like Janice. motherfucker wow <laughs> <laughs> no there's there, you're right there is a sense, a sense of motivation there there is that, yeah. that's, that feeling that this was indeed retaliation yeah yeah, <laughs> which is just ridiculous. Oh yeah, but it's very cartoony. But well, you want to get get a sense of that that's more of a character than just. We accepted how many versions of yeah. Jaws where the shark knew where the family was and went after them. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, anthropomorphizing mm-hmm. insects and creatures. That's something the film does a lot, it's especially horror films and 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 thrill thrillomedies thrill thrillomedies. Don't like that word. Um, <laughs> it's not a word. It's not a word. No. They only used it in that commercial and never again. <laughs> and we will never again either because it's terrible. <laughs> it's awkward to say and it's stupid. <laughs> mm-hmm. But when you try to fix it the other way, like killer, it just ends up that. <laughs> com- com- Camilla? Camiller? Camiller, yeah. No. No. That's it's worse. Not, yeah, that's worse. It's even worse. Yeah. There's no need to mash up words. A thromedy? A thromedy just sounds dirty. Yeah. Thromedy. Yeah, you need to put the thrill in the thromedy. Yeah, you do, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's one of those things and this may have been one of the first things of of that the that word mashup so we don't have like the benefers and all that fun shit. Yeah, probably. Also a thing that should go away. Yes. I can't believe this movie's twenty eight years old. Like even just right? watching it, it's like Really? This is almost 30 years old? Some of the fashion, I'm looking at it going, okay, yeah, I yeah. see it. But no, like it's still... So uh, much of it holds up. Like All the practicalness the I think of it is because the the practical... In a, something that's practical holds up generally a lot better than anything CGI. Especially yeah. from back then, absolutely, yeah. yes. I'd even, even the animatronic spider, like I had trouble spotting that. Yep. Yeah. You know? yeah, there were a few close-ups where like, eh, but very yes. few. Yeah. Especially the anger biting where he revenge kills of Doc. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's some obvious moments. <laughs> <laughs> but not that many of them. Yeah. No. And oh, Goodman. I'm sorry. I just love him. He was him. great. Yes. Uh-huh. He plays Delbert McClintock. Yes. <laughs> yep. He is an exterminator who is introduced being called into the Jennings basement, which is yeah. being... One of the best scenes in the movie. Yeah. Actually. The doctor, Dr. Jennings, uh, Jeff Daniels, is converting it into a wine cellar, but mm-hmm. the wood is all just rotten, and he yeah. thinks he has termites. Like, he is trying to put up wine shelves and hooks and things, and he's got a nail gun, and he keeps shooting them up into the kitchen floor. Because <laughs> yeah. it's going right through the wood to the near to the me- next good wood which yeah. is actually the floor yes yes <laughs> now my question is is as somebody who has done home improvements and stuff like that why the fuck is he using nails that long <laughs> right? See, i don't think they're that long this is what i think is happening they're six no, but he, no no he they was are, trying to shoot them into the studs he was trying to shoot them into the studs like if you have that stud but then it's rotten i think it's shooting through the stud and then hitting the floor but they're still exceptionally long they yeah. are oh yeah no they're long but they were never meant to go any further than the stud exactly yeah, yeah. no and i understand i understand that yeah but even so, I mean, he's I mean, he, an amateur because you'd never use a nail that long. No, if you well, no, it, you would on, gag, you I would, know. you would on a stud if you were affixing something really heavy onto it. Yeah, I wouldn't use nails which would be that. wine. No, I would use skirts. Yes, 
Yeah. But again, it was for the gag. It was for. But he's for also a doctor. Way. He's not a contractor. Yeah, this also, is part yes. of what it l- shows, yes. <laughs> and that's that's yeah. part of the whole thing. Like I like that. He it's shoots a tiny off detail. two or three before he realizes he might yeah. be killing his family. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's funny. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's funny, but it, 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 it's one of those things. That it, my my logical brain's going. No, you wouldn't do that. No, you wouldn't do that because. I've come I couldn't across figure those out types why, of repairs in my own home. I couldn't figure out why owners. he was yeah. doing what he was doing. Yeah. Like if he was drilling in there and trying to well, put a hook in there, I would have made sense or something like a screw. But like, why are you putting nails into something that's already nailed down? I didn't understand what he was doing. Yeah. yeah. See, but this is I kind of like that detail because it shows you as a contractor, he's a great doctor. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's funny. It's just, but again, it's just my my logical. But the town home doesn't think so because every time he uh, has a patient, they wind up dying because of these mysterious spiders. But yeah. it takes a little while for everybody to figure out it's a spider thing. And they name him Doctor mm. Death. Yes. Yeah. yeah poor guy. <laughs> yeah. And this is all the work of Doctor Metcalf. Yes. It, He's fear mongering. He is absolutely fear mongering. Mm. He is a right he, dick. Yeah. If in in okay. a more modern world, he'd be running for president. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Easily. He wouldn't have to retire from being a doctor. He'd just run for president. Yeah, and you know, it was hard because when he did get bit, I had no empathy whatsoever. No, not at all. Because he's a dick to his wife. He's yes. a dick to everybody. Yep. Yeah, so when that thing crawled up in his shoe, and I'm like, serves you right. <laughs> but I think that's the point of the scene is, yeah, yeah. about time. Yeah. and Because you do kind of need to get him off the... off the, the You the, need Dr. James to be able to do the work he needs yeah, to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. you got to get the old doctor out of place so the movie can progress yeah. past the, you're a murderous Dr. Jennings. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You're murdering your patients. And once you take him out too, you can do the bit where he exhumes the bodies to look for the spider yeah, bites. They, you can't do that when, Jen, yeah, when Mac, that guy's Dr. Metcalf was blocking the autopsies saying, no, this was just a heart attack. He was, I mean, and rightfully so for the most part. Like, I do defend that a little bit because... I mean, everybody would know what kind of species would have been around at that time. Yeah. They would yeah. have, uh, nobody would have thought it would have been a bug bite. And it takes a while for even the connective tissue to happen. Yeah. I mean, Dr. No, Jennings already very fearful of spiders, but until the, all the coincidences yeah. of the original expedition that recovered the spider yeah. and that the photographer was from this town and it took a while and he just happened well, to call this guy up, uh, Dr. Abernathy. Um, Atherton. Atherton? Yeah, I think. It was right. Atherton. I'm sorry. Dr. A- Atherton. Because I kept thinking uh, William Julian Atherton. Sands, yeah. <laughs> yes. Julian Sands yeah. and who happened to be the leader of the expedition in the first place. So there's a lot of coincidences that happened in this movie and I just tried to ignore some of that because it was yeah. like, that's awfully convenient. There's obviously only one spider specialist in this entire planet. <laughs> well, well, he was the nearest spider specialist. Nearest. He was the that's nearest, true. They do say that. Yeah. He was the nearest, but he was also the one who was there when the photographer died. Yes. And which yeah. is also, here's the thing. And, and make that connection until it's, later. It's not and so much. Knew, and there was a little talk about Kanaima. Yeah. But it's not not so much a coincidence when you think about the fact that like the photographer was there the only coincidence is, coincidence is the photographer was there because the spider's only going to come back with the photographer's body to the same place and then he's only probably going to look at a spider person who saw was the last person who saw the photographer alive who just happens to be a spider mm. specialist I, I do like how dismissive he is initially in that phone call yeah. he's like well you know every every now and again these towns get these little Scares, Flare, yeah. scares up and they like to blame it on the local on the spiders, which spiders I get. and flora fauna whatever until and he hears the, the town true. name which is good yeah, which yeah. which should have been a hot fuzz moment but he still doesn't go because he sends no. one of his yeah. assistants which I liked his assistant yeah you but said the hot fuzz moment a hot fuzz moment where you're like going okay so you're expecting all of us to believe that all of these people had heart attacks in this small of a town at the same amount of time you can't have that <laughs> Like, you know, there's like going, it's like when, in a hot fuzz when they say like, why do you think so many accidents that happen in such a tiny town? It's very suspicious. It is very suspicious. Yeah. And that, that I, I was waiting for that actually in, in my rewatch of it. But yeah, I, I mean, I, the whole thing with, with the, the lack of investigation, I did find really frustrating, but that's because I know what's going on, right? Yeah. So it worked because I was frustrated. Right? Mm-hmm. Because it's like, oh, fuck, figure it out already. <laughs> <laughs> right? You're a smart doctor. Right? Yeah. And the other thing that bugged me is that Dr. Metcalf was the one who examined the first 
victim that, who was actually Dr. Jennings' patient, mm-hmm. right? That really bugged me. It's like, okay, well, Jennings didn't really stand up for himself. No, she's my fucking patient. Yeah, mm-hmm. and Metcalf comes in. He's like, well, she was my patient for 30 years. She's been your patient for a week. Yeah. And yeah. now she's dead. <laughs> But it, it, from a from a doctor legal perspective, that doesn't matter. No. That's he's her physician at the point of death. Therefore, yeah. he is her physician. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Yeah, and that bugged me to no end. Yeah, right? so I wouldn't kill Small her. Small But that was the sheriff at the time. The sheriff would. It's, yeah, there's a fucking goddamn old Stuart Pankin. Yeah. <laughs> Stuart Pankin doesn't know how to be a sheriff. Like. He doesn't uh, know clearly. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, because all, all, I mean, they, they established Even the it. local townspeople don't take him too seriously. No, no. It, not at all. I mean, they established that his role is basically writing tickets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then when, and the lady, she's like, ah, oh, screw that. She like rips up the ticket. Yeah. Margaret. I <laughs> yeah. loved Margaret. I Margaret's loved great. Margaret, yes. And I don't think I would make her the first victim because of that, because of that doctor-patient relationship. I, she shouldn't be the first victim. Mm. Oh, well, but she was the na- she was the neighbor. She was actually yeah. really close to the house. Yeah, and that's that. That's the device. That's the problem yeah. for, for me. Is because of, because that inter- interaction doesn't work. Something has to change there. Yeah, I wonder if you could make it. I mean, in this movie, they've made her a widow. Maybe we just widow her over the course of the movie with the spider. We still get to keep Margaret. Yeah, like, I mean, and you still get a victim that's close to the house. That could work. I mean, there's something. Something has to change there, though. Be, we don't know her story. Maybe yeah. she's a black widow. Yeah, <laughs> that, that like would that. be awesome. But yeah, yeah I mean, I have no, like going, oh, the spider got to him first. Yeah. I have no <laughs> objection to her being a victim, none whatsoever. Yeah, I, I, because you need that. You do tragedy. need victim. I mean, there. Yeah. That that is the beauty of this this movie is, you know, the people get bit. It it's just a spider being a spider. Yeah. It's not yeah. malicious. Although these are very aggressive species yeah. that they've established yeah. in this movie. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you know, they're not, they, and then when you're setting out the soldiers, the soldiers are there to all the, bring back food. Yeah, and, and See, establish territory. Yeah. And I want, I think what needs to happen as well is, like, when you're talking about the aggressiveness of it, I need to see more victims sort of more drained of their blood mm. as, like, they're just, they're feeding on uh, Yeah, these. but these smaller spiders, that's not what they were there for. Like, the big spider desiccated mm-hmm. that photographer's body over time because it was being shipped from... Venezuela. It took yeah. a little bit to get mm-hmm. back home. Yeah, it was probably shipped, literally yeah. shipped. Right? Yeah, yeah. I know, so but I just kind of want more of a, a hint that it's the spiders. It's more than just a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, you'd well, have to have a lot of spiders feeding on it. I think to fully desiccate mm-hmm. a body so, or, or a really big one for over a long period of time. See, and I think that that we, we, you could have one of these uh, one of those deaths where it's not as public, where people don't find the body until mm-hmm. later. Right, because oh, there you go, yeah. Right? Because you've got Margaret's death, which they somebody finds her right away because she's still fairly popular in town. People come to visit mm-hmm. her, that kind of thing. So they mm-hmm. find her quite quickly. Um, and the football player dies right on the field, which was a great scene. That's really yeah. Good. The venom's really quick. Yeah, right. And that was the, that was the other Ooh. thing I wanted to change. Is I mean, if you want to make this a more horrible movie, you can make their venom necrotic. Yeah, and then it's. You know, but if we're going to stay with PG, then, I don't think we need to, right? No. Yeah, yeah but, but then then the guy get, like, that gets shipped, if their venom's necrotic, then he's not going to just look desiccated. He's going to be rotted. Exactly. Yeah. And that, it would make a great awful. visual if you were making it like a real horror horror film. Yeah. But if you're making sort of a family horror, not so much. No. But I would make the, the general's venom very, very venomous, yeah, but they, not, they establish, as, not as quick. They establish with the um, photographer mm-hmm. that it's uh, pretty much a paralysis type of venom. Yeah. See, I would keep the general's venom really powerful. I would have but not the as little quick, but I'd have the not as quick be the little tiny spiders because they're mating with a domestic one that doesn't have See, that much venom. And I, th- I, th- I would go the other way. I would say that it's a very, a very powerful toxic venom that takes a little while to, to affect because you, you can create some of that tension from when he, when the cameraman gets bit. He gets bit at the scene. Well, right? and I, you know, you, I got the feeling that they moved the the death seemed to happen far more quicker when they got to town with the domesticated uh, versions of the spiders. Well, they're not domesticated. The the, um, the domestic version. The, domestic yeah. the, the, the one that's here. Yeah, there. because you see, and it seemed to be a little slower with the general because when he bit that photographer, there was the paralysis and seizure that was kind of happening before he died. Yeah. And it happens, it seems to happen faster and faster with the small. Yeah, and that's, I want to establish that a lot more is that this crossbreeding. So maybe the, 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 the domestic spider that he, that he mates with has a weak, but very quick acting 
Venom because it's what can paralyze its victims. Okay, right? so I'm on board with yeah, yeah right. but the the domestic one has to have some sort of venom. It does. Yes. We can't have it. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's not harmless. It's it, it's harmless to humans, but it is still a very quick acting venom for. It'll its be prey. one that makes you like balloon up and go like you were talking about. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I had gotten bitten once when. Uh, I was uh, younger. I was visiting my grandmother. I was just a young teenager, and uh, something crawled up and got bit me near my watch. And when I flicked my hand up and felt it, like I heard that felt this sharp pain, it probably got squished under my watch band. I never did identify what actually bit me. I don't even know if it was a spider. But my hand just ballooned up for like an hour before coming back down again. And, oh. That was painful, yeah. and I don't even know what kind of spider that was, yeah. or whatever it was. Yeah, but I, that's that's the type of the type of thing I think that our domestic spider does. It's not ta- it's not lethal, but it's very fast acting. Whereas I would I would make it lethal. Our, our domestic spider? Yeah. What what's the point if there's no risk? Well, that's the thing is is what the well, the, the interbreeding is what makes it lethal. Right, you have this. Yeah. The, the, you have this South American spider. Oh yeah, no, that's like extremely. Yeah, weird. No, I mean, you I might mean, as well was, just have two spiders come up. If yeah, that's no, the case. I mean, the, the, this Venezuelan boss spider was was breeding with a harmless house spider, but obviously that house spider. I mean, if it had a venom, it would have been completely non toxic to humans. But because of that well, breeding, the offspring. That's the point those. I'm trying to make. Well, is, that's that's what they do in the movie. Yes, but what I'm talking about is this. Is I want the South American spider, our, our general, yeah. to have extremely lethal venom that's not super fast like it is in, like it is with the drones, right? That's that's something that that develops through the interbreeding, making it a more effective predator. That's mm. ge- well, the soldiers. Should, well, I guess that does make a little more sense because yeah, the soldiers are doing that kind of work. Exactly. That's mm-hmm. that's the, that's the point I'm trying to make. Is, yeah. is 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 I'd like to have the cameraman's death be. More more prolonged, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, you can even have our doctor I actually say, wouldn't, wouldn't mind him being still alive before... Well, I guess he is He pretty much... Uh, he, no, he's found dead because it was uh, crawled in bed with him and it yeah. car- crawled into the cot with him. Yeah. But Pervy, I, pervy spider. Yeah, it would have been cool if people <laughs> were around trying to help him before it, he passes away. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Is he's bit, actually gets bit and at that, the scene. And that really starts building the tension. Exactly. See, and I would have liked to maybe have also had one of the local guides be like, oh, and like he's like, oh, he's got a spider bite. And the local guy going like, he's a goner. You're just going <laughs> to Yeah, have well, to... and the local guide wouldn't even go into that for us. No, yeah. exactly. So I, I wouldn't even have the – I would – again, if he says he's a goner, it – deflate that tension right so you, but I, I like the idea of him being bit at the scene the spider crawling into his backpack or his camera bag or whatever mm-hmm. and then they're they're tending to him in the camp and and then he has that final seizure and the blood and all that stuff right i think that, that would establish that it's a very it is a deadly spider but it's not quick acting and then you have that evolution I, it's, I really it's want fairly quick but you want to see this, right? yeah if you want to build the tension and just uh, prolong the suffering a little bit longer yeah yeah again because I, that's what was missing from the movie from for me for this movie a lot was there was no there, they set up the tension scenes really well and then it just kind of deflated a little bit for me mm-hmm. right? I, I think that was done on purpose because it, it's supposed to be kid friendly right mm-hmm. yeah. it, is, it is a hide behind your couch kind of family movie watch through your fingers but that's okay yeah. Yeah. yeah, or are they spider legs? Yeah. And I don't. Yeah, and I don't want it to <laughs> no, be really I, graphic. I right? go with Daryl from Bob's Burgers. I'm going to watch through my fingers, but it's just because I really like my hands. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, I, that's just my thoughts. I just, I just like the idea of, of of this hybridization also being an evolution, making mm-hmm. it a, a stronger, more powerful spider. Yeah, right? well, I mean, yeah. part of it is not. It's it's been evolving as an apex predator in exactly. its territory. So yeah, you take an apex predator and then you make it stronger. It just makes it that much mm-hmm. scarier. And without that's, yeah. being and that's graphic. What, why the spiders are also not fleeing from humans. They they haven't learned over time to fear humans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That they are are a threat at all. They're just more food. Yeah, I mean, they're pro- these things are probably used to um, killing larger animals in their own natural habitat yeah and feeding see, on them. and i think there's that's i think that's the one thing like you're saying and it's faster acting and people see. die quicker there has to be something happening because if it's just a bunch of dead bodies like there's there's no food there what for if, a spider what, we all should, the blood will coagulate it's yeah. gone yeah. we should actually establish it really early on when they enter this unexplored forest is the finding a, a body of a larger animal 
<laughs> oh, finding a panther or that's a jaguar. been yeah completely desiccated. Yeah, they, 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 that that would work too. But I don't know. I just I understand what you're saying. Is is but that's going to be a. Lo- I'm sorry. That's just a logic hole that I know was going to bug me. But there's still it's all, that logic hole already exists, right? I, I, but I, I want to explain why it's venom is faster. It, what works so yeah. quickly? I know. I, but I mean, if we're going to fix it, let's we're, fix the logic hole. We're not. That's minutia. I know, I mean, and it, it, they've they created a spider that's based on ants. So, mm-hmm. like, it, you know, the whole concept is far fetched to begin it, with. It, exactly. Right. But I like the idea of, of yeah, them finding uh, like cattle that have been bitten and yeah. are, are are maybe are desiccated. Well, it was a right. forest, so I don't know, water buffalo or something. Well, you no, can, I'm talking about when they, in the town. Oh, in the town. Oh, see, right. and what I could do, what I would do with that is like, you have. I would say there's just a ton of these little tiny babies. And like mm. at some point they're like, yeah, that cow is rig. Like you could have such a gross moment where the cow is wriggling a little bit. And they're like, is that ca- thing still alive? It is not. All no, of a sudden these things big, spiders out. burst out. But yeah, you do have you're like a water buffalo or a panther as well. So you have this so that the, doc- the Dr. Yeah. Atherton. Yeah, you never see anything parallel. other than the bird get killed. Yeah. No. But um, um, you see a couple of animals get threatened like a cat. But like that see the you know there's like a spider cat showdown yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. but I, I like that idea like the, the idea of having the parallels you have the, the the large predator cat in in south america and then a larger animal in north america yeah that, you know it's a farming mm-hmm. community so it makes sense it would be there's going to be some farm cattle. animals that would get and and cows and cattle would work great where they're just this is a food source or whatever and or they're they're in the way and, and what and i have large, that large, and large. they're large and they wouldn't flee from yeah. a spider or anything no, they'd crawl up on the and and they'd probably get bit and if yeah. you're doing the whole ant drone thing i just want more spiders more of the small spiders i want more of them you heard it here first trish wants more spiders Yes, but only in the context of this movie. <laughs> she lives downtown and so- No! No more spiders! <laughs> you, you don't want me giving out your address? No! Oh, okay. I don't want the spiders to know. Because um, <laughs> as in this movie, the spider can just have a, a grudge. So I don't want that. <laughs> But yeah. I think of the tiny ones, the tiny hybrid ones, there has to be just, I think there should be more of them. There are a lot of them already. I there mean, are a lot of them already, but not until the end. You don't really see, the, see how many of them are until the end. Yeah, you know what? It's, it, I thought it was funny that they're in the Jennings barn and spreading out from the barn, but they don't make it house to the house until the end. I mean, granted, that's the second nest has been moved mm-hmm. into their basement. Yeah. And then when they hatch they're coming up but yeah. which is weird yeah. it's they've already come up but at the end of the movie that nest is hatching so there had to have been at least two yes. down there well and and that's another thing that happens in movies is is the procreation's happening really quickly spiders don't really breed that quickly no. mean, but they breed in huge numbers mm-hmm. right? And they would be. They'd be. That's why I'm tiny, saying yeah. huge numbers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's so. I, yeah, I think that maybe there's. We'll have maybe we'll have more time pass as, as this is happening, right? So, uh, so these deaths aren't happening quite so close together, and then that would also lead into that hot fuzz moment a little bit differently than Trish was saying. Is if it's happening over a couple months, then it's not Jenny's, as suspicious. It's not as suspicious, and it doesn't feel as quite as forced. Like the frustration that I felt. <laughs> It maybe not won't be there so much because it's taking place over a longer period of time. I don't know. It's just a, because yeah, the, the science doesn't work in the my logical mind. Oh no! I, in, in terms of entertainment, there's a bunch it does. of this that doesn't work yeah. because I mean, you'd have in, in in the logic of this movie, they're just going out and killing things, but not m- getting food. Yeah. Like they're going to die. They're going to kill themselves out by killing all the food surrounding them. Well, and no, the doctor and nobody kind eating of explains them. that. He, mm-hmm. he does explain they're that. They're establishing a territory. They're establishing a territory, and they're getting rid of all the other predators. Mm-hmm. But then where's their food? Well, things still exist. They're getting rid of the predators. Yeah, but I mean, Which you're you, still getting rid of, in this thing, they're kind of getting rid but of this the is food. A, I mean, this is also, they are an invasive species. This is not territory that they would be used to. They don't know what is and isn't a predator at this point, because this is not their territory. So everything is a threat. So yes, but I mean, getting point. rid of everything means they're getting rid of the food. Yeah, but no. Well, like, human beings aren't it's food It's not like they're the stopping, food. oh, let's go kill that ant colony, let's go kill, there's plenty of food. <laughs> We don't know what their natural food source is. Yes, but it's not humans. 
Yeah, right? but I just mean, because if they're killing the, everything. Just because the general fed off the human doesn't make them make people their food. Yeah, I mean, it's blood, and it doesn't doesn't matter where it's coming from. And there's plenty of other insects, and I mean, and the spiders animals. can't be everywhere. Yeah. It's the bigger stuff that's getting in the way. That's going to be the first to go down because it's the easiest to bite because there's lots of surface area to bite. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. And I like the way that these spiders, the, these soldiers, when they are out in the open, they're victims like bang, like that. People step on them. I want more of that, right? We mm. have the one scene where double yeah, steps on one. Yeah, there's just as many spiders are killed, if not more spiders. Well, definitely more spiders are killed in this movie than humans. Yeah. For every human that goes down... Every time you think they're going to get another one, a spider goes down. Yeah. So yeah, there is a, there there there's a balance. Lots of lots of, lots of accidental killing of spiders in this movie, or deliberate even. Mm-hmm. Like there's that, yeah. like I said, that was our one scene with Del- with Delbert where he just like steps on one, squishes it, and that mm-hmm. leads to a great line. It's like I think there's still some of them on the bottom of my shoe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that line, but yeah, I, I I'd like to see sort of more of that like sort of like sort of show the infestation growing yeah. o- over this period of time. Right where you see this, it's like people I'm commenting on, like, wow, there's sure a lot of these weird spiders around lately, kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. It, it, it does, it, but they never make the connection between that and these deaths. That are yeah, because they're not going to automatically go after you every single time. Although they are aggressive, they they do say that out right. They're stealthy, but it, well, yeah. they're just they're spiders. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're crawling on all sorts of things that we don't do. <laughs> yes, but like every one of the deaths we see, we see the doctor mm-hmm. is in his slipper. Yeah, um, Margaret is underneath her lampshade and bites her when she goes to turn on the lamp. Yeah, and then the football player he dies because it's in his helmet. Right? Yeah, so and you almost get one in the shower. And yeah. there's mm-hmm. there's a few, quite a few, almost. Yes, and but they're always because you can't see the spider. They they can't see the spider. As soon as the spider's visible, it's dead. Why couldn't that one in the cereal box been alive? Stuart Pankin. I just wanted him to <laughs> die so badly. <laughs> well, this is the remake. You can make that sheriff die. You can cast Stuart Pankin and kill him. I don't know if I cast a sheriff. <laughs> I don't. I didn't. I, I, I didn't. <laughs> I did because just for for a fun reason. <laughs> I, I I meant to and then I forgot. But yeah, I don't know what you could else could change in this movie aside from trying to make those moments of tension a little more effective. I mean, and make those essentially, a more effective. essentially, you. I mean, changing the movies fairly simple if you want to. What's happening in the movies fairly the same. If you want to keep it identifiable, doing it in that small town that can be isolated, that makes the most sense. Yes, mm-hmm. but you you don't technically you don't ever have to leave that forest if you don't want to for your first movie. True, you know they're, they're spiders, so you could have that expedition being the whole adventure if you want and uh, that would be just as thrilling although we've kind of done that with the kong movie uh, and anaconda. Yeah. Anaconda. anaconda and like so yeah and if you're doing it and we, it doesn't feel as threatening if you don't move it into an urban area an urban area yeah. where Whoa. there's a threat of this invasive species going forth and taking and over america it doesn't feel as dangerous because part of part of the danger there is you've got the spider coming into your home like this very domestic bliss like suburban type of feeling where people are supposed to feel safe yeah and that's part of what's what's supposed to create sort of the the fear mm. is, is this this could happen to me kind of thing yes. right as soon as it's in a jungle it's like well i'm never going to the fucking jungle anyhow so it's never going to happen to me yeah. right? exactly and it desensitizes you yeah but you see spiders in your own home on a regular basis or outside your own home on a regular basis. Yeah. And I think that's exactly why they they kept it urban. And yeah. uh, I think I would do that too. I mean... Well, not quite urban. It's a rural town. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'd be interesting to move it into a larger, like a city setting. And yeah, have sequel. it in an apartment building. But, yeah, that's the sequel. That's arachnophobia too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's wreck with instead of no zombies. Yeah. I, you know, I was just about to say the same thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then Go you'd have the exterminator episode. who was trying to come in and exterminate the spiders. <laughs> okay, well, I think we're on the cusp of our remakes, but first, I want you to uh, check out a couple of our friends' podcasts. Uh, so give a listen to these trailers, and we'll be right back. I'm Don Wrinkle, and everybody's got a podcast. And if you're going to listen to one, Import Taste is the way to go, because it's very greasy. This is Bill Lawyerson to tell you that Import Taste is the podcast you should listen to if you want to get sued. I'm Big Jim, here to say if you listen to Import Taste, I huh? guess we'll give you a Christmas handy. 
It's in poor taste. It's definitely not a comedy podcast. And it's definitely not educational. And it's definitely Australian. Stop, Stop asking. asking. Hello, I'm a Giorgio Casadoro, and this is my brother. Fatima. Come on down in poor taste, or we'll take him back and polish your jewels. That's us. South Hills, Pittsburgh. Born and raised. Listen to In Poor Taste on the Podsberg Network, www.podsberg.com slash In Poor Taste for all of your edutainmentional podcast needs. If you guys sit there, we'll put Hey, everybody, it's Drew. And Nathan. And we're coming to you from the Real Feels Podcast. Hey, Nathan, do you like movies? I love movies. Do you like talking about movies? I could talk about movies for a while. Hey, you know what? That's pretty great because we're on every other Wednesday and we're going to bring a new movie to all of these fans. All 400,000 of them. 400,000. We're going to divide that by about 400,000. And <laughs> how about how about some new movies, Nathan? Ooh, some classics. And uh, maybe some childhood favorites. And we can't forget the guilty pleasures. I love some guilty pleasures. You know what? With these movies, I think we should talk about some of our favorite scenes. By far our favorite quotes. I'm Definitely. And you know what? Anything else that basically just pops into our head. I like it. How about you guys meet us here, like I said, every other Wednesday, same bat time, same bat channel, on your favorite podcasting apps iTunes, Podbean, and hey, don't forget us on social media. Look for us on Facebook and Twitter. The Real Feels Podcast. Hey, I hear it's the realest. All right, time for some recasting. Who wants to go first? I'll let Sam go first. I was going to say, since Trish was still doing it when she got here, she should have to go first. (laughs) Ah. (laughs) Oh, well, you know, you can go first. It'll give her time to kill what's crawling on her shoulder. There we go. And she (laughs) looks. She still looks. And she still looks. Yes, it's so bad. I just (laughs) can't. Just spiders, I can't. I can't. Uh, you know, it's, Except it, in the movie, I need more spiders. Nowhere else in the world do I need more spiders. Face your fears. Face your fears in the most passive way possible during Face Your Fears yeah. Week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it is pretty passive. <laughs> right. So I guess we'll go to casting, and I guess I'm going first. So I cast a, the, sort of the key characters, uh, like Dr. Jennings, obviously. Um, I cast Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I know I've used him a couple times before, but I think he'd be perfect as this charming young doctor coming to a small town. Mm-hmm. For my Molly Jennings, I don't think I've ever used her. I cast Kristen Bell. Okay. Oh, yes. Because okay, I think they'd went... make a perfect couple. I like her. Yeah. For my Delbert, um, I went with Jack Black. I think that he stepped into that role mm-hmm. really, really well. He came across my mind, but yeah. I didn't go there. Um, he just popped into my head and I went with it. Uh, for my Dr. Atherton, I was Simon Baker from The Mentalist. Mm-hmm. For my Margaret Collins, Kathy Bates. Okay. okay. I like that. I didn't cast my Margaret, so yeah, I and, cast my Margaret. Yeah, I had to because she's really important at the beginning of the she movie. She is, and I, I just flaked. But I like oh. that. I like Kathy Bates in and that role. That's interesting. There's also another character with the same last name, Collins. I didn't realize it until just now, but Chris Collins is Dr. Atherton's assistant. Yes. Yeah, I, I cast him too. Yeah. Um, I cast Joe Keery from Stranger Things. He plays Steve. Oh, okay. Right. I wanted to, and he's about the right age. He's in his late 20s, grad student kind of age. And then for my Dr. Metcalf, John Ratzenberger. <laughs> like it. Nice. Yeah, I thought you guys might like that one. Nice. Um, and then I cast for my director. I went with Adam McKay, who did direct Ron Burgundy and has a writing credit on Ant-Man, so he can do action comedy fairly well. Okay. Nice. Okay. Another insect. Yes. <laughs> that wasn't deliberate. It just happened. Um, okay. <laughs> see, I'd like to see that movie, Ant-Man and the Wasp versus the Spiders. <laughs> I'll wear my spider bed t-shirt today, so... That would be a great movie. Think of these spiders against Ant-Man and the Wasp. <laughs> well, that could be interesting. That would be fun. That's a whole other spinoff I, I, I think I'd be cool with. Yeah. All right. For my casting, uh, I'm going to go with my director first. I wanted somebody who could do these family kind of adventure thriller movies. So I went with Brad Payton, who ha- has directed Journey to Mystery Island with The Rock, uh, San Andreas with The Rock, mm-hmm. and Incarnate. I, th- I thought he had the, that kind of balance of like those family thrill ride type. Did, of did you cast Rock as Delbert? No, Rock is not in my movie. That's too bad. <laughs> He'd make a great Delbert. He would absolutely. I thought about that actually. He would. I did make. <laughs> but up I was my, like, he's I, in everything. He I did mix up some of my castings, so there are going to have to be some name changes along the way. But for Sounds my good. Ross Jennings for that Jeff Daniels role, I went with Chris Pratt. It just seemed mm-hmm. natural in that role, especially with the more muscular Chris Pratt right now being deathly afraid of spiders. I, I just 
giggle at the thought of somebody like we've yeah. seen in a very heroic roles l- lately uh, being well, completely non-heroic. Also, I thought that I, I, my casting is a tall, like a taller, bigger guy because it's more. It's interesting when a big guy is afraid of a tiny thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so the rock in that lead would be good too. Mm-hmm. For yes. it, by that theory, yeah, that's a great yeah. way to think about it too. Yeah. Like yeah. it's more. Yeah. yeah, and he does comedy so well. Yeah, he does, mm-hmm. and we haven't seen him do like we've done this comedy in his roles. We haven't seen him do a straight up comedy in a while, yeah. and I think, uh, you know. Get get him back to the roots where he's comfortable. Uh, for his wife Molly Jennings, I went with uh, Elizabeth Mitchell. I've used her a few times before, but they're mm. about the same age. You know, they're in their early thirties, and she's from Purge, the election year uh, that probably what most people would know her from recently. Mm. For my Delbert, I love this choice. It just it didn't. It wasn't uh, my. I had a lot of names running around in my head, and then when I went down to the the rabbit hole that these these casting sessions seem to mm-hmm. be just something I've somebody I've never used before. And I'm like, this is perfect. I went with George Garcia from lost Hurley. Nice. <laughs> nice. I'm like, I see it. Yeah, I see it. exactly. Once I said, once I came across, I'm like, yes, yes. Yeah. That's that is, that is Delbert. <laughs> I, I love him. I, I, I think I did cast him a few months ago. I think something. you did use yeah. him on something. Yeah, Cause I, I love him. I, I loved him in um, how I met your mother as well. Mm-hmm. He's had yeah. a couple guests. If anybody there. knows what that episode Sam used him in, let me know. Because yeah, I do remember he's looking at him. Yeah. Nice. Now my, for my Doctor Atherton, we're gonna have to do a name change here. I went with an Asian actor, so we're gonna have to make him Doctor Lee or something. Because uh, I didn't think his nationality. Oh no, it doesn't matter. Impor- it doesn't matter. So well, I, I will tell you why. But this cast is very white, so yeah. I wanted to get mm-hmm. a little more multicultural within our casting, and I went with Soon Kang because I don't get to use him enough oh, in things. Nice. <laughs> if like anybody it. hasn't doesn't know who that is. You've never seen a Fast and Furious movie, right? Yes, I need more Han. More Han. I was so furious when he died, but not fast. You're fastly and fu- fastly I was furious. furious. When oh no, died. I got furious real fast when he died. <laughs> he he was in a lot of movies, but he te- technically was dead in the first one. He was in, yeah, technically. <laughs> so it was it was like the Titanic. It was going to sink eventually. But considering <laughs> how he died, they brought back Michelle Rodriguez. That's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. She died roughly the same way, but she lived. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, getting a little mad. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to bring him in as our uh, spider scientist guy. I like that idea. Yeah, because, you know, he also dies in this movie. Oops. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> Spoiler. Yeah. It's only 28 years. Get over it. Yeah. For Chris Collins, that was Atherton's assistant mm-hmm. in this movie. Chris still works because it can go either way name-wise. So mm-hmm. I went with a female character for, nice. for Chris. And I went with Emma Dumont. Uh, I wanted her, her, like Chris, to feel like a grad student. Yeah. Somebody who's an understudy, yeah. right? And she's most uh, recently can be seen on The Gifted as Polaris. Nice. And I really dig her. So I want want to bring her in there as well flesh out this cast and make it a little more interesting i didn't have a margaret but i like sam's choice Uh, and for my doctor sam metcalf i went with i wanted somebody who do who's kind of grumbly and and tough um and could still be kind of funny watching it at the same time Mm -hmm. i went with tommy lee jones nice because it had to be of a certain an old uh, curmudgeonly doctor get it Yeah. yeah right Right, so yeah, and that's uh, and that's it was what it sort of informed my choice as well. Yeah, I mean, and we're basing our casting on the initial cast, as I said when, at the outset of this show. We don't always know what our remake's going to look like, and I still don't think we know. No, <laughs> no, really? no, I need. I just sorry. I just need more of an explanation of like how the hierarchy of the spider works. But I'm. But that's that's the, something to figure out. That is that is the spider scientist's job in this movie yeah. is to mm-hmm. explain spider science stuff and trying to not to make you fall asleep doing it but that reminds me of something that does need to change is dr atherton's death it's really really wrong oh it's so quick mm-hmm. and just a blink of, yeah it, there's something wrong with because that he right. knows this is an apex predator he knows it is mm-hmm. right and he, he knows, knows what it is he knows what mm-hmm. it is and he goes and he twangs the 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 alarm the, the alarm web right yeah. knowing full well that he, that he's drawing out the spider so why would he just 
why would he not be ready for that? I, yeah. I mean, and there's mm-hmm. also just like this big shock that it leaps out of him, and it's fucking stupid. It it's is. The, the yeah. guy completely needs to change. That needs to change. His death has to be it, it, far more subtle. Yeah, and yeah. honestly, he's there only long enough to give a partake some information, and then he becomes a victim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he needs to be part of the solution for yeah. a longer period of this I movie. I totally agree. There has to be a bit of a heroic death to him as well. I and think. it really makes me mad, made me mad because I love Julian Sands. At least he, he discovers mm-hmm. where the nest is in a fairly intelligent way yeah. before yeah. everybody else does because yeah. it's through the photography of, of the wife, yeah. of the Absolutely. Jennings' wife. Yeah. So um, I, I think that was uh, very smart because he was recognizing the web. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that makes sense. See, I like that scene too. That when I'm saying when you're talking about like the mm-hmm. interesting spiders, yeah. but I want that to be part should, of it. He should have been rallying the troops at that point. I know where it is. Yeah. It shouldn't have been other real people realizing on their own. It should have been like, okay, I know where this this spider mm-hmm. is now. Yeah, but where it also is this? Cell phones, right? Yeah, or where the common uses of cell. Oh, that's true. I right? mean, yeah, this is 1990, 90. so. Yeah, so not everybody. Very few people actually had their own cell phones. Yeah, right? and if we're modernizing it, then mm-hmm. that that whole scene changes. Yes. Yeah. 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 There's still people going to like the ones with the, the corded phones just mm-hmm. to, to make a local phone call. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, That's so, where we're at. Yeah. And uh, you know what? I don't think Dr. Atherton would have been up in that kill zone by himself either. No. Right? That's, no. that's the thing. Like, <laughs> that's what understudies are for. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, I'm with you. He would have sent in his grad student. I swear you know to what? God. He would have used the fucking smoker from the beginning of the movie. Yes. Oh, absolutely. That's what he would have done. Yes, yes. You could have just threw it in there, fired it up, and turned it on, and then... Cleaned, and- cleaned everything up, boxed it up, sealed it up nice and tight so yeah. it survives again. That makes for a lot less of an interesting movie, no, but doesn't. that makes sense. No, it doesn't, because they don't know about the second nest. That's right, they don't. Right, so it doesn't change the movie, it doesn't make the movie any less interesting, Yeah. It, but it prolongs our, our, our screen time with this wonderful doctor who's supposed to be really smart and intelligent yeah. and, mm-hmm. and, a, and a genius. He thinks spiders. he's got it, but he yeah. doesn't. He he's got it. So I love the mistaken. Well, actually, ending. he does because in the in the original movie, he is killed by the boss spider who goes back to the basement. That's right. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know what it, why it went to the back to the bar, and if he made his nest in the basement. Yeah, but. and that and if if that would fix one of those plot holes, is they yeah. they find mm-hmm. it, and maybe he goes, well, there's a whole bunch of these new hybrids, but we don't have the boss yet. Yeah, right. That that would make more sense. Yeah. And then you could have something very similar to the beginning of the movie, where well, the, where the boss is watching, and that's how. And then he you could does have the stalking it where of the doctor. he's got. We've mm. got the queen, but there should be a boss. Yeah, well, no, but the queen would be in the basement with the other nest. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Well, then maybe that's it. He's got the boss. He thinks it's solved, but he doesn't have the queen. Yeah. Yeah. That could fix that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and you, she's going to be aggressive defending her nest. Yeah, and it, I. The showdown doesn't necessarily have to be with the with Jeff Daniels, although it's got to be in a way that. Something's got to happen where he conquers his fear of spiders. Absolutely, that's part of yeah. the point of the movie, right? Yeah. See, I, I mean, and I, I don't want to be like a conquered fear of the spiders. I think he's still afraid, but he can handle it better. Who wouldn't be afraid after that? That's exactly. That's it. it. Well, <laughs> that's it. Like yeah. he's 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 conquered it just for that spider. It's still pr- a problem because <laughs> phobias. You don't really. I don't think you truly really kind of get past. There's still a bit of. Fear I don't there. think he did. They moved back to San Diego. Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, how about oh. this? Because I, I, I think part of the... We still got Trisha's casting to do, but yeah. Yes. We can, yeah. yeah, we'll, we'll get... We'll oh, get no, back. no. We'll, we'll, I, we'll, I like where we'll we're going yeah. here. Yeah. I feel we're getting to something that we were... We're now finally getting, to, getting something in the, in the remake, for sure. That we were um, missing. Yeah, so what... I mean, the... the, the I think the idea of Dr. Atherton dying the way he did in the movie was the irony of the spider expert being killed by a spider, right? But what if you take that away? It's not necessary. And you move the... He, so he... So Jennings discovers the nest in the base, basement. When he's trapped under the wine thing or he's trapped however we trap him, the, the doctor, Dr. Atherton does come down but gets killed entirely accidentally by another falling wine rack or something like that. Right? Well, no, right. he could actually be... Or even survive. Yeah, he could actually be attacked and mm-hmm. and die. Yeah. Like, just adding more jeopardy to that situation. Absolutely. He's trying and to I think, mo- I still love the rescue in the movie is, is great, where it's like, here's yeah. Delbert in the last minutes when everything's fine. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although, I mean, he still has to make his way through all those spiders upstairs. But. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I do like that. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, because there's maybe... still the other spiders. That's the thing. He may have killed the boss, but there's still those other spiders. But they can't procreate anymore. They can't, but they can still kill a lot of people. It's they funny can. that they were all starting. To, they were all succumbing to the fire or starting to die uh, when they were outside. I'm like, ah, that doesn't make a lot of sense. No. no, that needs to be fixed as well. 
It definitely needs to be fixed. But yeah, you know what? Maybe he, maybe he goes down to try and help Jenny's get from underneath the wine rack and gets bit. Just mm, something simple yeah. like that, right? It, it's uh, you know, Atherton, the Atherton character could be almost almost because he he could almost be the antagonist of the film, a, a late antagonist of the film outside of the spider. Because he doesn't want it killed. That's yes. and that's a very common scientific yeah. thing where the guy would be like, "No, we have to study it. We can't kill it." That happens in a lot of movies. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're, you know, he's it's kind, kind of, of a, a trope. In rela- itself. Yeah, it is almost a trope in itself, and he's the relatable bad guy. I mean, like th- these things are killing people. Like we do have and to y- get rid of these things. You can have the antagonist also be like that grad student, be like, "I understand what you're saying, doctor, but." Come on. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. They're yeah. looking at how many people are dead already. Yeah. And that's not even because of this spider. Yes, yeah. They, yeah, these are lethal spiders, right? Yeah, yeah I, I think I like that idea, actually. That, yeah. where, where and he, that changes the movie quite a bit in an interesting way. It does, yeah. It changes the, the last act of the movie yeah. in a very interesting way, yes. And, and like when the grad student's saving the family, it's like the so, grad student's like, we got to kill all these spiders. It's yeah, not a good so, idea. So, I mean, there could be a fight in the basement, but it could start with Atherton. Yeah. Yeah. And then the spider ends it with Atherton, and then the, then you get the final conflict between the yeah. two. That actually could change entirely, but I mean, it doesn't have to be a wine cellar or whatever. But no, but it works. It works with the way that it's. I think. It. I think so too. Yeah. See, and I think it also works for another reason in the fact that he really he wants the wine cellar more than he's scared of a basement. Because if you're scared of spiders, basements are terrible, and you won't go down there. Mm-hmm. But if it's your wine cellar, you will go down yep. there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's one of those rationalizations that people have that, that who have fears like that use absolutely. Yeah, like he. Yeah, honestly, if there's no reason for him to go down there, he will not. Mm-hmm. No, I like that idea. I, I like the idea of there being sort of a confrontation in the wine cellar. Uh, maybe uh, Jennings has found the 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 other nest, and mm-hmm. Atherton is trying to keep him from destroying it. He says, "No, no, let me let me yeah. take it." Let me take mm-hmm. it away and and let me study these things because it's a new species. I really need to study it. And his rationale is not an evil one. It's just that rationale that scientists have. Mm-hmm. Right? It's like I need to study this. But this that, is the, this is essentially like a plague that's getting out of control. It mm-hmm. is right. But he doesn't see it that way. He always sees it as is as, as, as this new species that needs to be protected because it's a new species. Mm-hmm. It could work really well where they're, they're, they're sort of – it's not even a physical confrontation. Can it's also, just a confrontation, a verbal. And there's, there might be like a slight shove where then the nest breaks open and Atherton gets bit. Right? It's entirely accidental. There's no maliciousness behind it, but it's still – yeah, like, I mean, he wants to study the spiders. He wants to study their venom. He's, like, going, the original spider didn't have anything like this. We have to look at this. Exactly. And that was where I was going mm-hmm. with, with that whole conversation, is mm-hmm. it, it is, is, is now something, that, now it all ties together, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the hybridization must be studied. Yes, because they've never seen this before either, mm-hmm. right? The, oh, technically, they only need a live offspring but yeah. to yeah. do that. If you have the originator as well... The, the research could be go that much further as well. Exactly, because you, mm-hmm. you, you have to understand how... Because, how I mean, can... in my mind, I'm like, how did they even breed in the first place? Yes. <laughs> like, it didn't... I wouldn't even think the two species would be compatible. And, and that would be why he'd want... The, That's why he'd why, want, why he'd want it, probably. The spiders as well. But he has original spiders from, from his trip to, to Venezuela. Yeah. That's right, he does. So he does. So he, so but re- they could have been just the soldiers, because, yeah. I mean... If they were offsprings of the same species, they would the soldiers would have been much bigger than the ones we got. Yeah. That's true with yeah. the house spider versions. Yeah. yeah, and like he'd want to study like how could they possibly make uh, how could they make children these two spiders? And it was like maybe they shared a common ancestor. Like he's really into figuring out, figuring yeah. this out. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and the, the rationale makes sense because he's a scientist. He's he's mm-hmm. not he's not uh, he's not bad. He's just misguided. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And I always like those kind of antagonists, the ones who, who, who mm-hmm. aren't bad for the sake of being bad. They just have a different perspective on, on the way they yeah, are. Yeah, and it's some, a perspective you can identify with. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then you have the grad student. When you say, like, they die outside, that's dumb. I think you want the grad student to be like, we're going to try and capture as many as we can to make sure that we have this whole infestation out of the way. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. because the drones can't procreate, which is the good news, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and they do explain that they have short lifespans as well. Yes. They do say that, and uh, Atherton explains that, yeah, the drones will have very short lifespans. So they can only expand so far, which is, I think, a device they use to make sure that, yeah. that this question that we have doesn't really come up. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's also the thought of turning in this movie into, okay, this spider is still like other spiders, they nest, they move forth, and multiply like any other spider. And part of the story is now we have an invasive species that is spreading, and it is containment. It is is very much like a contagion movie. Yeah, 
right. and you you just you don't play it you don't have a limited i mean insects have a shorter lifespan anyway but these every one of them can procreate yeah. and that creates a lot of risk and it means that this threat doesn't end with one spider yeah and that, that i mean that moves it out of almost moves out of family oriented into more yeah, yeah. well you know kingdom of spiders had a bummer ending yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, I mean, it, it devastated an entire town. You look yeah, at this, and we could see that, and you could have the town evacuated, right? Yeah, I like, mean, if uh, it's it, it is baffling that this movie never actually got a sequel yeah. to begin with. To be honest, it's, yeah, because yeah, it did very well. I like the I like the, actually like that idea where where it's like okay, we, we we've got the the nest, but this town's never going to be livable again, mm-hmm. right? So we're we're gonna we're and gonna, yeah, yeah, and you still have those spiders roaming around you, so you have to. People have to walk out with, literally with with the clothes on their backs. They have to yeah. go through to con- uh, decontamination so that they can tell that, so they're not carrying any on them, and and then and then they fire the town. They f- and then you get into the sequel called Planet of the Spiders, and yeah. then they eventually start riding on horseback and mm-hmm. talking and having human subjects. Oh wait, that's that's a different movie. Never yeah, mind. Yeah. But I like it. No. I do like it. <laughs> Somehow I think of a spider. Damn it! You blew it up! <laughs> Damn you all to hell! I might find it weirdly less scary, a giant spider that talks. And rides on a horse? Yeah, it's weird. I don't know why I find that less scary. <laughs> We we found we found the 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 crossover. Yeah, we definitely found a crossover. Like, I, yeah, maybe it's troubling because I have a large spider like them. Like other humans scare me, but a large talking spider not as much. Okay, well, who are your heroes and victims? Yes. Oh, my heroes and victims. Okay, yes. For Ross Jennings, I actually went with with Zachary Levi, who okay. was in Chuck, and like he's kind and of a going taller to be guy. Shazam! Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. He's just a taller guy. I just kind of like the idea. Sure. Of big yeah, guy. I can totally see him in that and role. And likable. He's one of those guys who's the actress. You're like, he's got a likable face, like Jeff Daniels yeah. does, right? Yeah. And and it's also I can see why he's having trouble in this town. Like he's like he'd be a good doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and people just don't want to give him a chance. Um, and then for Molly Jennings, fun, funnily enough, you went with Kristen Bell. I went with Jamila Jamil, who was on The Good Place with Kristen Bell. Well, there we there go. You go. <laughs> Six That's- degrees of. Kristen Bell. So weird. And then Delbert. I went a really weird way with this because I'm like, I just want a really big, imposing exterminator. I went with Christian Nairn, who is Hodor on Game of Thrones. Because I'm like, just a big exterminator. And Dr. James Atherton. I have Aaron Peterson. Mm -hmm. He's an Aboriginal Australian actor because I'm like, I'm sorry. The spider expert has got to be Australian. It should be Australian. I I I concur with that logic. (laughs) Because he's been around spiders his whole life. Mm Mm-hmm. And then I got Sheriff Parsons. I actually cast it, but I went with actually Victoria Haas, who is the deputy from Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, nice. the remake. Yes. <laughs> I just like that idea. <laughs> Chris Col- 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 Collier? Collins. Collins. What did I write there? I don't know. You can't read your own handwriting. No. Okay. It's Collins. <laughs> Collins. I, I went with Daniel Kaluuya from Get Out, because I'm like, he's about grad student age. Yeah. And I'd like to see him saving the family. Spiders, get out! <laughs> and you could have that wonderful tie-in lines for the end joke. We yeah, gotta you know. get out! Uh, <laughs> no, then I'm thinking Schwarzenegger. <laughs> get out! Get out! Get out. <laughs> and then for Margaret Margaret Hollins, I went with Maya Rudolph, because I just like her. I, I don't know who that is. Help Maya me. Rudolph? It's she's not an SNL, SNL alum. SNL, but she's been in like a lot of movies. They're all com- comedies. Can you name me one of them? That would help a Bridesmaids. lot. Bridesmaids. Okay. Bridesmaids. Okay. Uh, sisters. No, I've uh, seen Bridesmaids. Okay. She's okay. in The Good she's Place. She's getting married. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I'm fine. Um, I just, the name wasn't ringing a bell. Yeah. And for the old to the new crossover, Dr. Sam Metcalf, John Goodman. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I thought about putting John in here somewhere and I just, eh. He's also old enough to be an old doctor. He is. Yeah, it's getting true. there. And I wasn't sure. For my director, I went with, um, she did the birthday party in the X movie. It's Annie Clark or St. Vincent. Okay. Because this movie itself, I don't. It, it's not a huge action set piece. It's more horror comedy is what we're yeah. looking at. So you mm. don't really and need to make that, large set pieces. That short definitely was a horror comedy. Yeah, and that's that was, again, when it goes back to my, my issue with this film is it didn't, quite hit either of those marks for me but I think we could do that quite easily without changing much mm-hmm. I like the idea of having more close calls with the spiders uh, especially with the kids I mean it doesn't have to be their kids but but it should be but it doesn't have yeah. to be like kids almost picking one up 
the local children who aren't yeah. afraid of spiders because yeah. they're, they're farm kids. They're farm mm-hmm. kids. They're not bothered by them at all, especially especially the, 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 the first friend they make, the really annoying kid. It was supposed to be funny, but it was just annoying. She was yeah. like the Dennis the Menace type yeah. character. Yeah. Right. No, and and you know what, and and yeah, the, the, you could have a couple near misses with the football players before yep. the, the the incident in the helmet because mm-hmm. right? they had they kind of suggested that at the, at the bleachers there where that where that one dropped down by that girl. And you're thinking, oh okay, yep. and then you could instead of practice, you can actually have it a full game. It's, yeah, it would be far and more it, traumatizing, for, right? Yeah. Then you want to get the town uh, involved. That's how you do it. That's yeah. how you do it. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's. I think it's a great idea to, just to twist that, turn that around. And I mean, it'd be great actually because you could have that that, that sort of the aimless guy who's kind of not the best player mm-hmm. get called in because one of the other players is hurt, right? And then you have another injury immediately after, and people are like, and, and then you have the whole whole crowd groaning. It's like, oh, another injury, mm-hmm. and then it turns out it's a fatality. Like, yeah, like, like, just add to the the, the gravitas of the whole scene. <laughs> right? Keep getting sure. stretched off. Yeah, Jeez. yeah, exactly. <laughs> got spiders in their helmets. Yeah. <laughs> well, the first one pads. is just a legitimate injury, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, the second one, and but it, it it sets it up really nicely, mm-hmm. right? Gonna um, need another Timmy, right? And you know what? You don't even have to mm-hmm. show the spider in the helmet. No. no, right? Like they like they set it up before, right? But this time you don't see the spider until after it crawls out of the helmet after they take it off him. Yeah, yeah. Right? That would that would make it really really effective. Yeah. I also want when I kind of want doctor, one of Doctor Jennings' children to share his phobia of spiders. The one he does, and his son does. The, the, yeah, so, but I want that and like that I like that antagonism between like the husband and wife, where the wife's like, "You have to get past this because it's starting to affect our children." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that too. But but yeah, I like the, the football scene. I like where we're, where we're going with the football yeah. scene. Right? Oh yeah, like to have it a full game, definitely. Full game, oh, yeah. and just yeah, you know, somebody drops dead, and the panic that happens in the stands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, I and that I would that would switch. I switch up the orders of the deaths. Actually, I would have I would have it be that football player first, then Margaret, then the doctor. Right, mm-hmm. the, the sort of your your character deaths, right? Because I, I don't the idea of killing one of your sort of key characters right as your first death always bugged me, mm-hmm. right? And so having but is she was made, she was pretty much put there to, to well, she was to, but to be but a sympathetic also, character to Jennings, but that was the only purpose she served. She it, she well, was there for the audience to like, so the first death was really tragic. She was, yeah, but it, it, but she was also important because she was trying to integrate Jennings into the community, which I, they had already done. That's like true. She was already she was already doing her, her she function, threw them the party through the party. Yeah. She she served her function. Yeah. That's why she was the first death. I, yeah. I totally understand why she's yeah. the first death. She should be the first death. Well, also proximity to the Jennings house. She yeah. has. Yeah, and it, it does I mean, make and sense. If you right? want to keep that paranoia and that doctor death theme then she does have to be the first death because yeah. this is only patient yeah mm-hmm. but and that's my problem is is that's doctor that we talked about earlier is that, that whole doctor patient thing where dr metcalf should not have been the attending doctor at her death mm. right i mean i mean yes of course he's the he's the county coroner and they're kind of trying to ostracize this new doctor but ultimately it still would have come down to dr jennings but maybe he's just not standing up He's not standing up for himself at this mm-hmm. point because it's not worth it to him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because this is going to get him more ostracized in the community. Yeah, and that's the th- that's the thing that bothered me is like, is like why aren't you standing up for yourself? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have any friends in this town anyway. So I mean, yeah, by only... making an enemy of the sheriff, you were making your life hard. Yeah. Uh, he, I, I mean, the, uh, the enemy's already uh, sheriff's already decided that he's an enemy. So yeah, the day he walks into town. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like I mean, but uh, I know what he, I know what you're getting at. But the thing is, I know you want him to stand up for himself. But honestly, he's but, he's already yeah. having trouble. Like to to come in as the know it all. Here's the thing: as a country person, you're like this know it all city doctor With your comes in and starts and stuff. throw yeah newfangled methods starts starts throwing his way. They're gonna just take him actually just legitimately standing up for himself as this big city man throwing his weight around. Yeah, that's and just what's gonna they happen. Do really focus on those stereotypes really heavily in this. Movie. Movie because mm-hmm. like you've got the the football coach who's very much the standard football coach right mm-hmm. and he's like, oh that was one of the things I wanted I, I was going to have a little bit of fun with because they're playing with the stereotypes and they've got his son there who's like the quarterback right and I love it if he came out as gay at some point in the movie just for the, for the, for that to throw that stereotype on its ear because it's it's. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't it's kind of forced, I know, but I just well, and it feels no. like trying to make humor out of something. See, I yeah. want, I want the football player, I want the son of the coach to not want to play football. That's, I want that's him. Kind of where I was going, yeah. But I, I mean, he doesn't to have far, to be but, gay. Yeah. I think he just has to not want to do football. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you could make him actually. 
he wants to study spiders. Yeah, I, I was just about to go. He wants as, to be a as scientist. As about that, and that makes more sense. Yeah, you know, it's just, just like, because I, I hate that trope so much. Yeah. I was trying to break it, um, Ooh, but I went too far. You uh, could have it where he could be like when the grad student of Doctor Atherton's come by. He's like he's kind of he's really interested in talking yeah. to this guy. He's like going, okay, so like if I wanted to do science, what am I going to do? Yeah. Yeah, what classes should we be taking in college? What should I right? be taking in college? I'm going on the football scholarship, mm-hmm. but I want to be a, a scientist. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he he could actually be part of the movie, teams up with Collins or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give, yeah, I, because yeah, they introduced him and he was made him yeah. a kind of a throwaway character. And that oh, was I, a part. younger character, and if I've got a female Collins yeah. in in my version, they can hook up and. Little nerd couple. Also, also part of it, like if he's playing on the football team, make it like so some of his skills, like he has to run fast to get something that like saves somebody or he takes somebody out of a dangerous situation. Yeah, you could add some. His football some, skills yeah. come into play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his athleticism is still important. Yeah. No, I like that yeah. actually. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, like I said, you saw what you saw where it was going, and you took it in the I, direction I that should have gone. Mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. But I know what yeah. you want to do yeah. with that and character. That's cre- a good. You're part. creating new characters, new interesting characters I, in this town. Well, I, I wanted to take a character well. that could have been interesting in the original movie, but yeah. it was a throwaway character instead. I mean, part of me thought mm-hmm. it should have been his son that got bit in the helmet. Well, and that's yeah. why I thought they introduced him. Yeah, right. I thought that's, so a, that's too. why I thought died initially. Actually, and then yeah, we don't even know if we see him again. We don't. Even even in the practice, you don't really see him. Yeah. So, which didn't make a lot of sense yeah. to me, right? And that, and that was one of the things that bugged me. And I was just trying to figure a way to sort of make him more prominent in the movie. Yeah. And Trish has done it for me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Trish. I catch you. You're welcome, Sam. I got your back. Yeah. See, to, this is why we work together because we can find what yeah. you want to do. Like, yeah. and and with when you're talking with like making it a new hybrid spider, I get that. Like, I didn't know what I was going to do there. Yes, mm-hmm. but but and then it all ties back to the end where we, we come up with where we, just, we want to study this new species and why it's mm-hmm. so much more, it's so much more efficient, not not deadlier, but more efficient mm-hmm. than than the, than the parent spider. Because right? yeah. it is. That's that's the yeah. whole thing. Is it's efficient. It, it comes in. It kills. It's gone. Yeah. Yes. Now, Sam, I want to know what our listeners are afraid of, and I want you to run this on Twitter when this episode airs. Okay. All right. So what are, what are you most afraid of? Let us know. At Invasion Remake on Twitter, Invasion of the Remake on Facebook and Instagram, and Invasion of the Remake at gmail.com, because that will inform us when we come back around to do this again. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll try to incorporate your fears into our next wave of Face Your Fears Month when we yeah. do it. If, if if we do it again next year, which I think we will. Cause I think ha- has your be... fear not been made into a movie? True. Yeah. Do you have a fear that's, yeah, that maybe can't be made into a movie because it just doesn't make sense to make it into a movie? <laughs> yes. Uh, the irrational fear of bottle caps. I don't know why that's a thing. It's not a thing. Balloonophobia. Fra- uh, there's a fear of balloons. They have not done that in a movie. <laughs> I've got a whole list of phobias. Globophobia. I've That's got, what it's called. I've got a whole list of phobias. Some we'll never cover on the show. Well, what was it? Billy Bob Thornton had a fear of antique furniture. That's what? not making it into a movie. You could make it into as like a haunted piece of furniture. Yeah. There's some real. Yeah. There's some interesting fears out there. I. But there's some I totally get, even though I don't have them. Like I'm sure somebody has a fear of earthworms. I, I don't particularly, but I can see why you would. Well, How about FN. Okay, FN. Fosmobi. Can I? FN. No. <laughs> Fosmophobia. Because I want you to guess what it is. FN. Mosmophobia. FN. Fosmo. Fosum. Fosum. Okay. Fosomphobia. FN. Fosomphobia. FN. Fosomphobia. Fear of the sound F. No. <laughs> it's a pH. pH pH so it has something to do F- with light I would think wrong okay do you have a fear of intimacy because that's what you would have oh I do okay I have that fear <laughs> nice okay this one's going to be <laughs> that's amazing that's a phobia I possess this is going to be amazing and really hard to say uh, hippopotomonstro escapedelophobia so fear of horses no yeah Fear of long words? Hippo put. It is a fear of long words. <laughs> Which I remember is you also saying it was a longest. very long word. Yeah, you, yeah, you know what? I should have known that because Jay was saying that. He was it's, saying. <laughs> yeah, I should have put that together. Well, but hippo hip- is horse. Hippo is horse, but also like the Hippocratic Oath. It could be fear of doctors. Okay, fair enough. I was, But I was with you on the hippo. Yeah. I was going to focus on that. How about... Until it went on forever. And then I was like... Nope. How about panophobia? Panophobia. I fear know. of everything? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Pandemic... Panorama, pan. Got it. Lepidopterophobia. 
Fear of fat? No, lepidoptery is a study of butterflies. Rabbits. Butterflies. It is a fear of butterflies. Oh, fear of butterflies. And I do have a fear of moths. Yes. I do not like moths. I knew this. Not how you dislike spiders though no <laughs> not anywhere close to that they just give me the Ugh, willies it's a heebie-jeebie not so much a phobia <sighs> fucking ugly little bastards <laughs> and they flap at light and they flap against you and they're just Ew, they're icky when they touch you exactly yeah. they're just disgusting don't bug me <laughs> they don't bug you the bugs don't bug you huh they don't bug me you know, we talk about this, and like I said, I know, I, we've talked about how many how snakes and and worms make my skin crawl. They mm-hmm. make me go heebie jeebie. Yes, but like we were talking about before we did this, and like, I I don't know that I have any more have any real true fears anymore. Oh, we'll find it. I'm we, sure we'll find it. I'm buried alive. You know, because I don't think it's ever going to happen to me. I don't have a fear of it. Well, I don't. It, I don't ever want I, it to happen. I think. To me. I think that was a more legitimate mm-hmm. one, like uh, you know, a couple hundred years ago, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> that's why people would have little bells that would run exactly. down into their graves because, yeah. and people were wrongly buried alive a few times. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, how about the show? How about you do uh, do us a favor? Our fear is a fear of um, nobody listening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so help us out and uh, tell everybody about the show and where to find us. Uh, give us a short review and a quick rating on iTunes and uh, give us a five star rating and a short review. That would be great. Also, tell everybody where to find the show. We are on a ton of different platforms Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, TuneIn Radio, Player FM, Blueberry, Audio Boom, Spreaker, uh, iHeartRadio. And freaking YouTube. YouTube. Absolutely. We have a fear of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> YouTubophobia. 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 That's why we post the episodes two days later than everywhere else on, on YouTube. Because it takes Jay that long to work up his nerve. We're scared. That's right. I, I'm like, just give me two days before you give me the flag alert. That'd yeah. Be fine. <laughs> fear of flags. Fear of flagging of uh, and somebody trying to monetize my video. Yeah. <laughs> somebody who doesn't even have the rights to monetize it. Yeah. That's it's all so times ridiculous. Out of ten. Nine times yeah. out of ten. It's a fu- I, I, I've, I've never lost a fight. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So... Yeah, because the ones you know you don't can't win, you're just like, okay, fine. Yeah, just if, if 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 it's legitimate enough, I'm like, okay, the rights to this song that's buried mm-hmm. under this trailer. this trailer, I'm like, yeah, okay, I don't own that, but I don't own the trailer either, so I'll just yank it off YouTube, yeah. and that's why the entire episode, uh, entire library is not on YouTube. So we'll try to keep them out there as long as possible, yeah. but uh, if they get flagged and and I think it's a legitimate beef mm-hmm. and i i mean technically i can argue every one of them under fair use because mm-hmm. we are doing it for commentary purposes but uh, sometimes i just don't want to have the fight yeah <laughs> and you know i want to make it special so uh, you know I, I want this auditory experience to move to an auditory platform as, as much as possible so uh, mm-hmm. if you're enjoying us on youtube and you're happy with that we're drop every thursday on youtube but uh, if you want to catch them right away and make sure uh, you catch it before they they do get deleted and hopefully they will not <laughs> uh, then uh, make sure you ring that bell for notification so you're notified every time a new episode drops Otherwise, you can definitely subscribe in a bazillion other places and uh, make that transition and uh, listen to us on the go. Anywhere you want. Anywhere, mm-hmm. anytime. I guess you could technically do that with YouTube, too. You could just hit YouTube on your app and play it, and you got this video draining your battery in your pocket. And yeah. your data. And, and your, your data. data, for sure. Yeah, exactly. So it's a more cost-effective ways to listen to us. On the go with all those different apps that we're on. And uh, we're on a bunch that I don't even know about. So <laughs> yeah, I'm sure just search us out on your favorite uh, podcast provider. We're probably have, there. If Absolutely. you have a fear of wasting time or money. Yeah. <laughs> just search us on Google. I, I, I mean, I search us on Google almost daily, yep. just to be honest, uh, because I'm always looking to go back to, to information on our old episodes for Twitter and so on. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we are literally the first page and a half now. Yes. Of search results mm. on Google. You cannot not find us. After that, it's an invasion of the body snatchers. So. Um, I've, actually, you know all what? The time. Actually, that is the remake of The Invasion with Nicole Kidman is the next one. I noticed that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. I don't know why. We've, we've triggered something. Yeah. We've triggered something. Wasn't that movie called The Invasion? It was called, it was so called, it was called the, invasion. the Invasion. And yeah. so we and it's The Invasion remake, which is why it comes up. Yep. Ah, there we go. All right. Well, that was arachnophobia. 
That, I, I don't even have to explain it. Every episode we're going to do this month, I'll, I will start with the, the actual technical term for the phobia, explain the phobia. But this one was so self-explanatory right in the title. It made my job easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the clue is literally now, in the, the title. The, we, the, we do know that this is another one of those movies that might get remade. Right now, James Wan is attached to it. But uh, we could see four or five more people attached to this. This uh, could never happen. And maybe it will, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. And if it gets remade, we may have to watch the movie again because we will do a comparison episode down the road if it's done. So if James Wan is attached, does it mean the spiders are coming up with more and more elaborate traps for the people that are in it? Um, Yeah, they replace all uh, all eight legs with wheels Uh (laughs) and uh, are voiced by Vin Diesel. Nice. Okay. All right. (laughs) (laughs) I am Spider. I might go see that. <laughs> well, Trish is Spider, but I am Jason. I'm always Sam. <laughs> okay, no, realistically, I continue to be Trish. And what's the, what the hell is that? And I we, she looks again. I, what's that? Ah! <laughs> and we are out of here. If I tore the floor out, I would. False alarm, then lead on. How bad is it? Shh. I didn't find a thing. Go figure. Well, then why is all the wood rotting? I'll tell you why. Bad wood. Well, so what do we do? Tear out bad wood. Put in good wood. <laughs>